Hello, welcome to the Linkcast. This is the Giant Bomb Community's Guild Wars 2 podcast for the week of July 27th. I'm your host, Self Mystic, and joining me today is back after a really long time, Rawson. Hi. That, that, that's great. That's great. Do, new Barama. I'm live from London at the 2012 S- Summer Olympics. Oh, how is it? <laughs> it's so exciting. I met the oh. Queen. I wait. How do I how do I watch that? Because I don't ha- I don't get TV service down here. Oh, you, you don't get TV come? service? I don't I don't fucking pay for a goddamn set top box. No, you just fly oh. your plane to um to London, England, and then, and then wait. That's not started yet, is it? Oh, no, wait, opening started. ceremonies just started. Yeah. Oh, you fucking kidding me? Oh, I'm missing shit. The- did I miss the open ceremony? It was actually yeah, missed the open oh, ceremony. It was absolutely now we're going to have to cancel this stupid podcast. Uh, this, it hasn't started yet. You're all just trolling no, me. No, no, no. no, it no. Has. My mom texted me a while ago. It, it totally started. Wow. It's okay, started well, Tarkin says it, it's hard. Yeah. It's happening. Um, so also joining me is Tarkin. Hey, Tarkin. Hello. Hey, energy. I like it. Durin. Yeah, that's right. My mom texted me. That would be so much worse if you didn't have a wife and kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be worse if my mom just yelled down the stairs at me to let me know that they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, my You're household. missing the opening ceremony, <laughs> Darren, the Olympics are ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. So, how, how has everyone been doing? Make Rosen, sure you've been you on get for a while. Smokes. Are you excited for the Olympics, Rosen? No. <laughs> oh. Jesus Christ, no. I don't, well, I'm looking at the website right now, and I think there's a man with, like, a laser tag gun. He's <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, the laser gun. Plasma vaporizer. Yeah, the laser yeah. gun. They use that to vaporize someone. It's fucking awesome. I wish. I would watch the fucking Olympics if that was the case. No, you wouldn't, because it, it's, it's the same thing. Like, the problem there, with laser is, guns is that they're so much better than normal guns look, that oh, even when we do transition to lethal ways weapons, it'll still just be point and shoot. Like, it won't be But you need to watch people involved. disintegrate. That's, that's Like, true. that's worth watching. <laughs> look, man, I'm just, I'm just wondering, like, how do I become an Olympic laser tag player? <laughs> I'm pretty oh, good dude. at it. Laser tag's pretty fun. Uh, dude, everyone thinks they're good at laser tag. No one's actually really good. Oh, I'm fucking terrible people, like, at laser tag. Full into I'm, it. I'm pretty good at laser tag, but then again, the last time I went there, I was like 19, 20, and I was fighting against <laughs> so that was like, like last year. year olds. <laughs> <laughs> so you had the advantage, a slight advantage. I yeah, also, people always, I just, like, you never Hell no, man. The eight-year-olds had the advantage. They got height no, ability. No, <laughs> no you just gotta not... pin. You just gotta pin one of them to the wall and constantly laser them where you're supposed to. Okay, so you, okay, that could have gone a completely I, I... different direction. <laughs> in, in my defense, I did not do that, but I really, they got shitty aim. They're just they're fucking that is terrible. Eight, that's eight years old. <laughs> Look, all I'm just saying is fucking them. eight year olds are are terrible at so many things. <laughs> It should feel uh, bad. You're saying the eight year olds are terrible at life. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> God, yes. They're they should dumb. go to some sort of institution where they get taught about life. This is this country's broken. They don't have that. Yeah. Exactly. Make me the leader uh, of that place. Fuck. No, but the Olympic opening ceremonies, they were spectacular. I I recommend to everyone they watch it. it was oh, who is uh, wasn't it that uh Muse that did the song? I hate Muse. Um I I'm I missed that part, but Daniel Craig is in it. He parachutes what? off a helicopter with a queen oh, that's oh well, of course yeah that's what cool. wait with, yep. what I, with the queen? I can't tell if you're trolling me or not yeah, no well, tell. well it's obviously like a stunt double but it's pretty funny how they did it yeah. is, oh, it, yeah, is it the cool. queen or a member of queen <laughs> oh that would be pretty good too they did Man. maybe play, both. They did That'd be play great. Bohemian I don't know. I, did, I, I, I have to say, it's going to take a lot for it to top the Chinese. Oh, oh no, no, I think it topped it. I think it topped it. What? Dude, I, I, I uh, stand. I have to go back and watch this then. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not believing that at all. I don't. Yeah, I, don't think was, anything, I thought it was absolutely amazing, but I don't think anything is you, ever. You can reserve your Chinese. judgment on it after you see it. Oh, yeah. hey, the opening ceremony really did have James Bond and the Queen. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to go watch that. Anyway, then. so what have you been doing with? Uh, have you been playing any games, Rosson? I all right. I've been playing a number of games, including La Mulana. I got the remake for that. It's pretty good if you've never played it. It looks um, pretty good, but like the the whole shady website they're selling it on, and 
playism. Yeah, they have like uh, ten total apparent, games on there. Apparently, what? apparently they're they're not they're not shady. They're uh, they're basically like a, a Japanese indie site. They're just now breaking into oh. the whole. Oh well, no, I, yeah, it's not that they are shady. It's, it looks very shady. <laughs> um, and like I, between, I, the combination of that, Dave. the combination of that, and then like this game was originally supposed to come to I think it was WiiWare, but they had problems with getting through cert. Like that worries me. Like those two things. Like they had problems getting through cert, and they're releasing on something called Playism that like nobody's ever heard of. Instead of something like Steam. Well, as far as I'm aware, it wasn't certification problems as much as it was like publisher issues. Like some publisher screwed them over, or ran out of money, or something like that. But yeah, it would be nice if it came out on Steam. Uh, that said, though, if you're interested in the game, I do recommend it. It is pretty awesome. Uh, I've also I, I got Dynasty Warriors Seven. Today. Wait, wait, wait! But what what is it? I don't think we've, we've even said that. Oh, yet. oh, La Milana. Um, it's I guess the closest game I could compare it to would just be like Super Metroid. Well, isn't it basically oh, wow, kind, of, okay. kind of similar to Spelunky in some ways? Uh, hmm. it's more like Spelunky is La Mulana but randomized. Yeah, yeah. La Mulana, La Mulana has a lot okay. of that. It's a lot more um in the way of like puzzle solving than than right. Spelunky or Super Metroid, and it's that it's sounds a, good. Yeah, it's a fun game. Uh, it, it is also brutally difficult. Yeah, of, of course. Yeah, of it's course. Japanese course. and hardcore. I like it. And indie. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. And what um, else? It, yeah. It, well, I'll, I'll pick one more game to talk about. And I think I know which one I want you to talk about. Which one is that? It, it starts with a D and ends with Warriors. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, Warriors. I, I said it. I said it. But uh, I also, today I got Dynasty Warriors 7 and I've been playing that. Oh yeah, the, the I, twist. As I said earlier before the podcast, it's how the is twist. this a twist? Rawson, who you think might like good games, maybe even indie games, and perhaps less more obscure games, also likes Dynasty Warriors. I think that's a twist. I like. Well, the, I, I like all right, it. Well, let me let me explain my position on this. <laughs> the The last time I played Dynasty Warriors was over a decade ago for like an hour at a friend's place. And see, you were okay. doing good for a whole decade. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, yeah up. i i decided i wanted to go ahead and try out dynasty warriors i don't that's not a thing people don't just walk through like a, a <laughs> yeah you don't a you don't uniform like... shopping complex and go hey i really have a hankering for some dynasty warriors yeah, exactly i did <laughs> i got a hankering for some fucking three kingdoms <laughs> so i decided to go ahead and pick up dynasty warrior 7 and you know what that game gets a bad rap i'm actually seriously oh, enjoying God. it the game gets a bad uh, rap because there's seven of them, but there's actually only really one game. Yeah, <laughs> they've that's... released repackaged seven times. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, well, that's. I guess you can say it's this is your first Dynasty Warriors for realsies. So yeah, I guess maybe you get a playing pass on one that. Dynasty Warriors is. I, I don't even know why I'm helping you defend yourself. This, like, this bull. I, no, I'm moving on. We're moving on. New no, no. <laughs> if you buy A, no, we're gonna have. I, will, I do not besmirch the good name of Dynasty Warriors. <laughs> Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty is a good Warriors. Name? Bes- what? Yeah, no, it, no, it All doesn't. Right, look, look, let me Spoilers. try to explain this stuff to you. To, to don't besmirch the name of Hitler. He was a good person. <laughs> no, why are you doing this? I'm going to go ahead and liken it to. Why is it always Hitler? I swear we've mentioned Hitler way too many times. On this Wait, when have we ever um, mentioned Hitler on this podcast? At least three times. At least have, three times. I have called you Hitler many times. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's well, because I mean, I'm a fascist. Accurate. That's something different. All right, I'm going to give you like a minute to extol the virtues of Dynasty Warriors. If we have to be okay. Have to be okay. Right. Imagine uh, to, to give you an idea as to, as to the appeal of the game. Imagine like the Asian version of a game where you play as General Patton. You kill like 700 Nazis, and then you get into a sword fight with Hitler, and that is <laughs> one stage of the game. Okay, you know Try what? to imagine that. If I but was Asian, Asian is shit. If I was Asian, I might totally be into that, but. I'm not so like none of that fucking matters. Race, that's Asian, so racist. And that's a racist. Kids, that. like, and, like, and the three, like what you described, <laughs> that sounded like a fucking awesome game. But if it was but, actually Pattinson, yeah. But Pattinson. but like throw that into the whole uh, Chinese dynasty thing, and you completely fucking which is it. which is a really cool or period Japanese of dynasty. history. Yeah, yep, yeah, definitely. I agree. It's a cool period of history, but it's not a very good it, game. Yeah, it's maybe a cool period of history, possibly, but that is completely fucking ruined by a ridiculous and slash. horribly repetitive pack and slash i'm i'm not saying this is fucking Wait, highbrow right. entertainment how, here <laughs> how, how much of it have that? you played so far like have you enjoyed one hour of it or have you joined enjoyed 30 hours of it that's a very different I've, thing I've, 
I like I said, I got it today, so I've only spent like maybe <laughs> well, there you like, go, like, like three hours of it so okay. far in the game. So it hasn't out- outlasted its welcome yet. What was that three no, hours has- straight? Yeah, about oh, three God. hours straight. That's not too much. I, I, that's like three hours straight game. of of Dynasty Warriors. I finished game eternity. And- <laughs> I've, I haven't played it. I can't really say. Maybe, maybe people out there might know. Don't check out again. Don't, don't listen to Rawson. Duran, what have you been doing this week? What about you said? Uh, yeah, no, I'm moving on. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll get to you eventually. I get to you eventually. We need only one high pitched person in a row. Like we can't do two back to back. Duran, we've reached the high pitched quota of the week. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, just a couple of minutes. We'll get to you. How, how you uh, I, you I, I've been playing uh, Saints Row the Third. So a Good friend game. and I have been streaming that, playing that game co-op, and Noob's been watching, and Noob Whoa, Skype helped me choose my character. Um, go on. Yeah, yeah, I did. So my, my no, no, character, no, go on. Just go on. yeah, no, fine. So so Noob helped me uh, pick my character, and what it turned out to be is basically uh, Mecha Rihanna, Future Soldier. <laughs> Right, because like Duran is like in his character creation stage, and then he wanted he to make a live, silly right? character. He streams this live every week, or like yeah, every yeah. couple of days. He, or so? he streamed it like the last two days. Last two days, yeah. All right. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I'm like, make a really serious character, and he gets to an option, something with like a black eye, and so for some reason, I merely think of Rihanna, and I'm like, <laughs> make Rihanna. and put a black eye on her. So we made Rihanna with a black eye and a busted up nose. And then later and like, on, when, when we were able to mascara. change her clothes, she, yeah, mascara running down her face. Uh, and then oh, later, <laughs> when we were able to choose her clothes, she's wearing like, like dragon horrible. warrior shoulders <laughs> and like future military boots. So now she's become this like, like I said, like this mecha Rihanna. You, you, you know what else warrior. is a game that gets a bad rap? Dragon Warrior, oh. <laughs> aka Dragon Quest. So you essentially made. Oh, I like Dragon Quest. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. God damn um, right. I'm right. Yeah. Uh, no, this is bad. I just, I just, I just feel it. I'm just in a mood to disagree with you. So no, you're wrong. <laughs> guys. Everything's terrible. Um, but yeah, Duran. I, 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 first, we have to say that the, I, I'm hoping that the reason Rihanna came up was because just before the live stream, we were talking about the top um, musicians on YouTube. No, it came up because YouTube we found page. the black eye. Yep. <laughs> I, that, that's, oh, so so I, as soon as thought... Noob sees a black eye on anyone, he immediately thinks Rihanna. <laughs> Apparently, no, yes. no, no. It's just like learned about his Noob. character already looked kind of like Rihanna, and I'm like, eh, I, did you stick a black eye on there? And it's totally the, the, Rihanna. The sad part was I spent like what Noob like a good 15 minutes. Yeah, in character he, creation. he was like. Just, the sliders for that game is ridiculous, and he's like just yeah. all of the sliders. Just yeah, and, and, and it all it was all it all paid off when about halfway through the stream, somebody randomly came in and was watching, and they're like, "Hey, did you make Rihanna?" Yeah, someone <laughs> randomly. Just Fuck just yes, it was Rihanna. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I did. Validated. Rihanna just validated everything. I thought you were just uh. a big fan of the hit movie Battleship, <laughs> right, dude? I was gonna say Mecha Rihanna sounds very much what she essentially played in Battleship. No, she was more like <laughs> Rihanna Advanced Warfighter. Yeah, the, the mecha is going to okay. come into place. She, she really wasn't in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest here. She had like maybe three speaking lines. That's uh, it. I, I, yeah, I think there's a YouTube video of her three lines. That's it. Yeah, it's pretty like, great. Yeah. Oh, so God. pretty much that. He, here's your 30 seconds good. on screen. Here's your SAG card and your paycheck. Get out, <laughs> Rihanna. So yep. we know Saints Row is good. Anything else, Darren? Uh, I also played, uh, uh, no, pretty much that. That was it. All I was right, going to cool. say Guild Wars oh, 2, but that was technically Nice and short week. one. Oh, yeah, dude. Actually, yeah, that oh, yeah, totally counts. That totally counts. New Baron, yeah. what are you playing? <laughs> um, so I downloaded Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition the other day, which I bought on that Steam sale. Um, and for some and reason, I... somehow you stick to it more than Skyrim. I don't know what, how and this then And then I, I pressed the tilde key to bring up the oh, console. God. And then I typed oh, in fuck. TGM, which is to go, to go God mode, and then I God uninstalled the game. God damn it, noob! That didn't just, did you did that seriously happen again with Fallout? Well, I backed it up, so I, I think I'm gonna put it back in. But yeah, Tarkin, what have you been playing this week? I'm not. I'm happy. <laughs> that bullshit. I've been playing a game that I like to call theory crafting. Hey, <laughs> I, I, I like you. I like you a lot this week. This is awesome. Me and Turkey, I, I, I don't know, because... If you like each other so much, days. why don't you get married? Huh? 
I don't, I don't think that's legal over there. Life partners. <laughs> is it legal yet? <laughs> um, Be but yeah, domestic so like, partners, whatever it's called. Back in the Guild Wars 1 days, I was a particular advocate of build, build wars. This is just essentially the game of trying to figure out builds that were fun to play slash off the wall slash really overpowered. Um, thankfully, that has returned in Guild Wars 2. I can, I can definitely say that there's just so much in the way of customizability for your character that you can really just like dig right in there, look at the damage calculations or estimations of what the damage calculations are, armor calculations, stuff like that to get like, just like so many, there's so many ways to spec out even the warrior. And that's all I've been working on thus far. And finding out that we're well, kind of like semi converting Tarkin to my way of thinking and just like getting him to theory crafting was like the most satisfying thing we did this week. That's, well, what's up, that's the way about you've even got you've even gotten me into doing that a little bit and I've never <laughs> been that kind of person. Like <laughs> I've not gone so as far as I've not gone as far as you guys in like with the spreadsheet shit and everything. But I have had well, that's just me. That's just build me. pages <laughs> open up on my on my screen now for three days that I just occasionally <laughs> will go back to and just stare at and see if there's wait, things wait, what I can the change fuck? to make them better. So you yeah. fucking criticize me for making a text of all of the characters I'm going to make, and you've been do, spending yes. your week doing this, that is, that's unfair. I've made, <laughs> I've that's made, double wait, I've made seven, what is this? I've made seven builds so far. Would you like to check out my character builds for Dynasty Warrior 7? <laughs> so, Turkey, how do you like, um, what, 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 what have you spec'd out? I've spec'd out, what, Guardians, like a couple of Guardians, and some Warrior builds. Oh, hell yeah. Well, so have you decided... Well, we're going to get into it next week, our overall decisions, but have you decided yet which one you like? I was talking to you yesterday, and you were really tossing it up between Guardian and Warrior. I know you're going to roll both, but which is going to be your main? I think I'll have to stick with Guardian. Yeah. Hey, I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I, I, I kind of, like, nudged him towards Warrior. I've been nudging him towards Warrior to the point where you he's have, like, yeah. Like, I'll, I'll, for the past how many months really now? Good. Since Beetle like Witch in one, it's like play warrior. It's like no, play warrior. Dude, no, dude played warrior. Dude, play warrior. He's a rifle. Ah, <laughs> uh, dude. Oh, I love it. Like half our guilds, guilds warriors are all like just totally about the rifle, and I, I, I have to take at least some of the blame for that. I, just, I, so honestly, I, I'd actually tried out a warrior for for real Z's this baby. How'd you like and, it? And I, I fucking love the rifle. Fuck yeah! Okay, so we can transition. It's it's crazy. It's like it's like this should only be used in case of emergencies. And I'm sitting it's here like, going no. like, yeah, I love this fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's oh. great. So we're in plate mail and shooting people. It's the best of both worlds. So I we totally tran- agree. Before we transition, <laughs> I did totally forget one game that Cynic you get, kind of gave me shit for uh, starting to play, and and Which that was that? Smite. Oh, oh, how is that? It's 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 another goddamn MOBA. It, it how is. is it? But first off, I have to say I'm not a fan of MOBAs. I don't like League of Legends. I don't, I've never touched Han, and wait, I wasn't wait, a huge wait, fan Durin, of Dota two. Duran, wait, wait. Let me ask you this one question: Is is there only one map that is three lanes and is divided <laughs> in half by a river? Not a river, no. There, there is no river. There, there are three a lanes. Tree not helping a tree. There are three lanes. There is a jungle area in between with with mobs that spawn in there that when you kill them give you buffs. Um, and there is a guardian like thing at the end that you need to kill in order to win. And there are towers along the way. There are two towers and a how, phoenix that you need to kill in order to get into their guardian. On how own. many fucking versions of the same oh, goddamn Warcraft three map can we possibly <laughs> make? The biggest difference with this one is fun. that this one is played in more of an action MMO style. So it's like yeah. kind of third person behind the back. You have WASD control, uh, one through four or one through five of your are your abilities. Um, you unlock them as you level, and of course you buy gear like you would in, in the other MOBAs and stuff. But like just that change of control and of, of camera angle. Was apparently Changes enough. Changes a lot anyway. Because I fucking love that game. Like I am having so much fun playing it. And I, like I said, I played a little bit of League, like maybe a couple of matches, and I played a few matches of Dota Two. Did not like that style at all. Like I just, I've always been very anti MOBA. Um, but I went ahead and checked this one out because I got into the beta, and yeah, I can totally say it's it's pretty fucking cool. Oh, we I I forgot to talk about my beta. <laughs> Which one was that? Let's quickly that, come on. Let's go. That was- I, Planet Side Two. I got on the beta for Planet Side oh, Two. How do you like it? Uh, I I I'm super worried that it's going to be pay to win. Yeah, we we kind of talked this, about this a little bit before you, the show. So you, 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 you you're you saying could, that um your main criticism was the fact that you could buy 
weapons in the store? Was that it? Yeah. Or... Yeah, you can buy guns in the store, which immediately just kind of makes me just go, I don't... Uh... <laughs> Is that your balls retracting sound? <laughs> <laughs> that's That's my... Ow! Sound. Oh, okay, sure. Just, I, I I don't. It's it sounds because well, can you confirm that those weapons you buy in the store are actually better than what you come with, into it? I uh, right now uh, everything's unlocked uh, for the beta, but so so I can't really and and I haven't yeah. played it enough to say. But just on general principle, whenever I see a system like that, I go, "Ooh, it's gonna be pay to win." Especially, uh, especially yeah. since we're talking about a competitive game too. Yeah, it's just it's just difficult because it is a beta, and I, how many? Like, I assume you haven't put too many hours into it, so we can't really be, say you're definitive on this point. Yeah, I can't really say definitive. Yeah, but I mean, as far as it's the gameplay, worry, yeah. as far as the gameplay is concerned, it's pretty much more planetified. So if that's a cool <clears throat> thing for you, then you know, good. I guess. Yeah, a lot of people like that. a lot of people want more freaking parasite in their in their yeah, lives. Yeah, yeah. I I guess I guess it, if I had to choose between more planet side or another fucking MMO that plays just like <laughs> World of Warcraft, I'd probably play uh, uh, planet side. Does it feel like an MMO? It not not really. It's it's it, it feels more like a big first person shooter. Like like okay. a, like a giant game of tribes or battlefield, like Mag or something. That sounds that sounds cool. That or sounds cool or like Mag if if you played Mag. Yeah, that sounds pretty fun. Honestly, well, how many people on a zone or map or however it's divvied? I I could not tell you. Okay. Well, and we should was... we should we should get to, we're at what twenty something minutes, so we should get to oh, Guild shit, Wars. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, I want to come back to game. you and the rifle later. Uh, yeah, the game about this podcast is based on that's that's yeah, our twenty um, minutes. Oh, the secret world. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so the secret world. <laughs> I'm gonna go make a Dynasty Warriors podcast. Fuck you, people. <laughs> um, fun. So I wanted I, this week is uh, very low news. So we won't be talking too much about that. In fact, we I'm just gonna skip it. I, there's a couple quotes from developers out there, but like people like the Guild Gas have covered it. Oh, I have um, some news. Oh, <sighs> I, did I, you I get tot- a puppy? I totally no. I totally met two Guild Wars two developers on Mumble. Oh yeah, there's this. And then there was and this, then I was yeah. so starstruck. Starstruck. <laughs> I didn't even mention anything. I'm like, or, 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 I'll try to. Help I'm so happy you didn't mention the podcast. I'm so happy you did not. And, not mention and then you then you peed all over yourself because you're. So <laughs> oh no no! I shit my pants. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> oh my god. Well, the reason they're on was that they were checking to see if people were having problems with the the Mumble it's... overlay. Yeah, they, they, they'd, they'd heard people having issues with that, and so they were going from server to server, like trying to find somebody who had problems with Mumble with Guild Wars Two, so that they could resolve that issue. Which I think is fucking awesome, because yeah, I've never good, heard of a developer cool. going that far to try to fix an issue. Well, if he, this is what we were saying beforehand. Like uh, guys who play Guild Wars One know that ArenaNet puts a fuckload of effort into quality and stuff like that. I still so like this to me wasn't that surprising. But yeah, this, this is the kind of shit that is an example of how awesome ArenaNet is. If you if you're worried about ongoing support, two developers literally sat down and went through every or most of the biggest public Mumble servers, which had a Guild Wars Two channel, asking about Mumble problems just for the Mumble, just for Mumble. That's crazy. Just for Mumble. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you get hey ArenaNet, you're awesome. Um. Also, sometimes fuck you. Right, we'll see. We'll see how this podcast goes out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it depends on the topic. We'll just turn on a um, fucking dime. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the topic. Um, so I want to do it opposite this week. We're doing an impressions cast. So if you're not familiar with that, we tend to just like ramble on about various topics to do with the release, the recent beta, which we do after every beta. Um, we'll just be talking about what our experiences in the beta. We won't be doing anything in terms of like a particular in, in-depth discussion, I don't believe, but we'll see. Um, but I'm going to do it reverse. Instead of talking about PvE first and then saying we'll eventually talk about PvP but never getting around to PvP like we've done every other impressions cast, we're going to do PvP up front. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because... Well, Durian, do you want to break it to them? Structure PvP is pretty fucking cool. <laughs> Told you! <laughs> Well, I know I I had written it's it off before. Just because mad at it, he can't like anything that he's bad no, I, at. I'm with him. I, I'm with I, him. I, I wrote it off so much so that when we were talking about um, uh, filling officer positions for uh, the guild, I declined the position for um, structured PvP officer because I just had so little interest in it. I was just like, get somebody in there who will actually play it because I probably won't even fucking touch it. 
And now I am honestly kind of regretting that because I would love to set up <laughs> tournaments and, and shit for the guild. <laughs> And, and be kind hey, of we, might, we might still get you on there. Like we we we, we need more officers anyway. Like we, we, can I be an officer? Be. Uh, you'd have to be pretty active in the guild and the forums, dude. dude Rosen, oh god, to... I'm not gonna fucking do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is about as active so, as you're gonna get Rosen in, in the guild. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm I'm entirely with doing this one. I, I I have to say I'm pretty much the biggest culprit of just saying fuck structured pvp and i had a lot of legitimate concerns about it before but a lot of those actually been fixed and just before we get into impressions i want to state that uh for now the ranked match pvp mode in the structured is you can now join it with a uh, smaller group than five people so if you only have three people who want to do structured you can jump in two people can jump in and it'll keep those guys together so it'll, it'll fill out teams of five you won't just be three versus five by doing that so essentially now you have a grouped matchmaking system to some extent now whether that takes into account um rank which is the equivalent of uh well it's, it's rank it's how, how much you've played structured pvp whether it actually it's, takes it's into account rank and quality level. yeah whether, whether it actually in fact it even has like a level bar now across the bottom of the screen yeah. while you're playing which fills up as you kill people. it's pretty cool it's pretty it is, cool it is. Um, except for the whole like chess showing up in the middle of your screen while you're playing a match that yeah, kind of needs to go away weird. That can be a bit weird. Um, it should be at the end of the match. Or yeah, something yeah. Like that. But um, yeah. So uh, it, I don't believe. I'm, I'm not sure if there's actually a matchmaking system, like a skill matching system, for people of higher rank versus people of lower rank. So if you have a team with an average rank of four, would they get match made against a team with an average rank of twelve? Like I, we don't know if that's a thing yet. But that, that's a, it's a significant step forward anyway. So for example, if I, for me, if me Shav and um, Duran, who's the, the group of guys who play together this beta. Uh, wanted to jump into like proper real structured PvP, like 5v5 instead of 8v8, um, we could have chosen to do that. And that's a, a huge step forward. But even that aside, what really tipped me over was the new map. But I'll let Durin do this segment. So Durin, what made you change your opinion about structured PvP? Uh, well, I, I think a lot of it was my, my only real experience with structured PvP prior to this beta weekend was the very first beta weekend. And I think at that time... So few people understood what the maps were all about. Uh, a lot of people didn't realize, myself included, that like every single map was basically just point capture. Um, so what ended up happening was basically just massive zergs in the middle of the map, just players killing and killing and killing each other. And then on top of that, with the whole uh, lack of... Um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking here? I'm blanking. Um, what, tutorialization? Optimization. Or? Yeah, l- lack optimization. of optimization um, on, on the the games and like it just turned into like a, a slideshow so just i just generally did not have a lot of fun that like i said people right. weren't really trying like to do objectives lines battles from Guild Wars oh War. yeah lines back <laughs> battles back in the day yeah definitely so, but so like that just, about that but yeah yeah no, I, but just in general like because of that like those kind of combined uh things i just wasn't having a lot of fun and just didn't see that being something i would spend a lot of time in uh, fast back then you weren't weekend. very involved with the guild either, so you weren't playing with any of us either. No, like yeah, I, I, jo- yeah, I joined in there on my own, and, and yeah, it just was not a very fun experience. So, you know, fast forward to this beta weekend uh, when when I joined you and Chav in some matches. Um, it, it kind of surprisingly, and I, at first I was not too thrilled with it uh, when it tossed us in there. Uh, it split us up, so you and Chav were on one team and I was on the other team. And at yeah. first, and I was still like, "Oh, this thing sucks. where if we're on different teams, I can see where you're on the map, which is yeah." Still and that's broken. one thing. Like, yeah, that's one thing they absolutely need to fix because I totally use that to my advantage. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I, I tried not to look at it. Imagine if it was a radar and you were playing Counter Strike. <laughs> uh, so, you like a bug on the other guy. At first, I wasn't too thrilled with that because you know I, I, we, we joined up together. I, I wanted to play together, but I ended up on the other team. And, and actually, like that kind of even made it more fun because it, it added another level of competitiveness there. Absolutely where, surprisingly, like, I didn't even like this. Should be obvious to people who played a lot of competitive games. Playing against your friends can be really, really fun. Um, but it totally worked out this time around, and it helped that I got the necromancer, so we won a lot. It won. <laughs> <laughs> sucker um but yeah no, it was it was necros. great uh and and uh, pretty much because we, we still jump into the server list so again yeah. i believe this is a legitimate criticism you are standing in guild wars 2 surrounded by broken derelict castles and dudes in armor but you walk up to a fucking npc and ask to see the server list that's a it, bit does I don't, it say I, quote unquote like server list, server list. It's, it's a, a server, server browser <laughs> Server browser, that's right. Yeah, you ask to see the it's, server it's browser. Of, 
Uh, aside from that, going into and picking a ser- open server with enough, I think we just picked an empty one, so we we were the first people in there. So it was you, you, you on one team, and us two on the other. Um, we picked the new map, Battle of Kylo. Uh, no, not Battle for Kylo. It's um, Legacy of the Foe Fire. Oh, Legacy of the Foe Fire, and I have to say. They said that that map was inten- intended for people who like the original Guild Wars, and they totally nailed it. I love Legacy of the Fur Fire. It is my favorite map by far. Forest well, a close second. But well, I'd be what what is it about it? Um, so, so okay, yeah, we should probably rewind. So, Structured PvP um, is all based on a single game mode. I believe they call it Conquest. It's a... Um, capture point system so there's three points on the map no matter what map they are there's four different maps uh by controlling a point you get a certain amount of points per second um or controlling like a location um to those just involve standing over it just a normal like capping system so you stand over for a significant period of time it neutralizes if someone else already owns it or if it's uh, neutralized already it takes a while to slowly build up and be part of your team aside from that you get points per second for controlling each the three of the map obviously if you control all three you'll be getting heaps of points the other team will, won't be getting many at all um aside from that that's the, that's the basic conquest system you have secondary objectives so on the forest map which is a lot of people's favorite my second favorite there's two npcs um if one closer to each of the uh team's bases and if you kill them you get 40 points i think it was or 30 points and a buff across your entire team and they respawn halfway through the map match as well so that can be a game changer if a team's able to take both for example at the start and get that huge buff or steal both um uh, or it, towards the end of the game, if if one team forgets to kill their version of it before the other one does, then yeah, things can happen. That's one for the the forest map. Then Battle of Kylo, it doesn't have any secondary um, objective in terms of points, but it has a trebuchet which can do a shitload of damage to a point and pretty much lock it down for your team if the person on your team's trebuchet is doing a job of it. Um, which is interesting. It's probably my least favorite of the maps in terms of actual objectives it's probably my favorite in terms of like actual design i love the verticality that the, the clock tower brings to it um but then you have battle for sorry legacy of the foe fire which is by far my favorite which straight up has um the two keep the two enemy teams are imposing towers the size of the map you have three um points which kind of like run diagonally through the map so there's two one close to e- each of the bases um, so those are just normal points. There's nothing special about those, except for the fact that they're bigger than the other ones. So you can actually do some serious kiting while within a point. And for example, some points have a little bit of verticality and even water to them. Like um, the waterfall has like two levels to it. You can you can be knocked off the thing and, and, and fall into the water below. Anyway, there's a lot of interesting tactical decisions to be done in both of those. But the best thing is they also have guild lords. And for people who are, origin- are familiar with the original guild wars, guild lords were a thing from GVG, which is my favorite 8v8 mode in guild wars 1. In fact, my favorite thing about guild wars 1 in general. Um, in guild wars 1 how 8v8 worked was when you killed the guild lord you win the match that that's that was the the basis of 8v8 gvg play um the guild lord was behind walls which you had to find a way to open and you had the gates uh, were open weren't they oh yeah the the gates yeah the the gates which you had to find a way to open um yeah you had to like sneak a thief in or whatter um then you had trebuchets in that map matches as well are we talking about the original Guild Wars right now? Or yeah, we're talking about... Well, not a thief, a, a assassin. Whatever. Um, anyway, so you had the gates, which you had to open and get through, and you had the Guild Lords surrounded by a retinue, um, and they, they essentially recreated that in this. It's the fact that you can break down the gates just with physical force, and it's actually quite easy. You have, like, an Axe Warrior, someone with high DPS. Um, so you have the three points in the middle, and at the very edges near both the spawn points, there's the Guild Lords surrounded by Retinue. So it's a pretty interesting situation where you can you kind of have to subdivide your team into manning the points as well as maybe a two-person split to take the Guild Lord um, and obviously the enemy team can defend their guild lord. You have a pretty big uh, group-wide indication across your screen, which is your, your guild lord is being attacked, like that kind of thing shows up. Um, so the best part of, so to run, to, to break that all down to how the match plays out, it starts, both teams rush towards the center and the two um, points and then try to determine which, which of the two teams are trying to fight for supremacy across the actual points of the map. And then eventually, as things die down, they split off and start trying to take each other's guild lords. That's how most match, matches turn out. And 
getting a guild lord is 100 points. You need 500 for victory. So it is a significant uh, change or a significant bonus to your team. And generally a match ender. When, we, when me and Chav got the guild lord in our match, it ended the match. We went from like two, 400 to 500 and winning it. And it is it is just, yeah, it's just amazing. They nail it in every way. It feels like Ascalon in some areas. It feels like the Charlands in some areas. It's got the Guild Lord and the Retinue and the the interesting gameplay dynamics of having to do a split to actually get that dynamically. It's it's, it's amazing. It's just the, the best map. It's awesome. I love it. See, I'd, actually, my... <laughs> I'd actually have to agree with, with Togrim uh, when he was talking on the Buildcast about about that map. And, and the, I think the, the taking down of the Guild Lord, um, because it is... is Kind of a bit of an investment, especially when you have larger teams. I mean, our teams were, were fairly small when we did that, so it wasn't too difficult for you guys to do so unopposed. Yeah. Uh, but if you did that in a full 5v5 or an 8v8, um, it's it's very uh, – it leaves you very, very vulnerable while you're doing it. I mean, the very first, oh, yeah. times you, the very first time you guys did, you killed the, the Guild Lord, but we had taken all the points, and so we were actually even on points by that time. Yeah, that was, that, so that was cool. That I, was I, kind of, I kind of agree with Togrim that I feel like maybe killing the Guild Lord – maybe should re- uh, reward more than just the the 100 points that it rewards maybe give it a team buff as well like like the uh the guys do in the forest could be instead yeah. of just more points something to like, give you an actual advantage for doing it because otherwise like i said basically yeah. you guys did that but you got no advantage for it whatsoever oh well that, that was one of the matches the, the one another of the matches i went in with my rifle warrior used my axe to break down the door took out all of the retinue and then died when someone in your team respawned and killed me and stopped me um but then when we came back for the guild lord it was just like a, you just walked into the door killed and that was it like you can you can there's there's definite um advantages and disadvantages to every method of taking on the guild lord right you send one right. dude all of your team two dudes or whatever but like um, i said i think I when, you have, when you have full teams i think that that's going to be very different yeah uh, because you're going to yeah, have people exactly. responding a lot more often and can very easily get overtaken while trying to to fight the guild lord yeah and if it's something as simple as you wouldn't have to only take or well, defend the guild lord when someone dies you'd actually be able to be coordinated enough to send people back to defend him like sim- things as simple as that will happen um but I, well, that's that's just why I love it. Like th- these these interesting tactical decisions are why I love it. I like it more than the um, forest map because it doesn't have the stealing mechanic. Because the the forest map, a lot of people love it because matches can turn on a dime if you get a kill steal in on the enemy's um, well, what can be construed as the enemy's NPC because it's closer to their like their the spawn point. But if you can send a ranger over or something with high DPS, you can wait for them to wear it down then just kill steal. So you get all 60 or 80 points or whatever it was at the start of the map and both buffs for your team. Like Stuff like that can happen in the forest map, which is definitely dynamic and interesting. But I, I, I personally don't like the whole element of kill stealing <laughs> being an element of pvp i know it's fun but it's just i prefer something that is a little bit a little bit more to do with your team dynamic and tactical decisions rather than just having a lucky kill steal in a lot of cases um but either way like the, the fact that we're able to have the discussions just means how like how well they've executed on these maps and matches and, and a lot of it comes to it like um a lot of the reason why we liked it this time around versus the every last time I, I did it was because we take took it less seriously. I think this time around, like we didn't go in and feel bad when we got dominated. We kind of just went in and just like just had fun with it, which is pretty good. We were we we didn't do any tournaments. We just did pugs. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Though, I, though, though after saying, doing that, you're I saying can... a video game was fun when you tried to have fun. Yeah, yes. When we didn't take it seriously, I, I can when we tried to that. have fun. <laughs> and and you give me shit for Dynasty Warriors? What's wrong with but you? But Guild Wars Two is I'm a not, good I'm game. Not let, this is not a yeah. podcast for. This is not a soapbox for Dynasty Warriors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't you dare have a smirk. But no, like we didn't like we didn't do. <laughs> fight you. We didn't do a tournament, but I, I could definitely see after the kind of the fun that we had, kind of playing against each other. Um, I could see having an absolute blast uh, coordinating guild tournaments where we did like five on five tournaments with with guild like members yeah. of, our, of our guild kind of playing against each other. Like that could yeah, be a lot exactly. of fun. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of it because we did we did do some tournament play last beta weekend, and a lot of my our problems with it was because we were trying to take it a little bit seriously, and the fact there was um back then the matchmaking system just wasn't there, or so you only had teams in the tournament play which had been preformed five v five made teams, and obviously if you look at like um YouTube videos and stuff and just coverage from people like uh, T Paradigm and Super Roll- uh, Super Squad I think it was, um there are definitely 
really good teams out there already and there is a really high level competitiveness in the um, ranked pvp or whatever you want to call it mode of structured pvp i can definitely see us focusing more on the pug way of playing at least at the start until we get much better at it individual as individuals yeah um but you know it's it's again again I've, I've i've swapped from fuck that to hey i actually can see myself liking this a lot um I haven't turned on it as much as you. I think I've coined it as saying, you've turned 180, I've turned like maybe 120, maybe 90, <laughs> I don't know. It's all right. Uh, I like World vs. World more, but it, it's definitely, definitely cool. Yeah, I, I, I definitely like it's World vs. World more, but I, I feel like uh, the nice part about enjoying structured PvP now is that with World vs. World, like I absolutely, you know, you, you pretty much want to play it with other people. There's no... There's really no fun yeah. to be had playing solo. I don't care what they have added to it to allow solo play to, to have more objectives. It's still not just <laughs> not nearly as fun as, as coordinating, um, you know, strikes oh, yeah, on, team. on towers yeah. and things like that. Um, whereas with structured PvP, if, I, if there's nobody else around that wants to do structured PvP or maybe only one other guy or something like that, the fun can still be had and you can very quickly just hop into a game play a couple games and hop back out i think world v world is, is a bit more of, of an investment to really kind of get that fun out of so it's, it's nice having both of those options there and being able to enjoy them yeah absolutely and i, I would definitely say that um so so we'll I, we'll get to world versus world in a second um Back, yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll just leave my comments on that to, to a bit. But I, I want to round out the structures PvP discussion by saying, um, so there's a couple of elements to consider when you're doing structure structure PvP, and one of them I I I I will be using this as a soapbox for myself because it's my podcast, so whatever. Um, Keybinds, <laughs> keybinds. Um, so one through five, shift one through five. Supremacy. So there, there is. So how much is Razor paying you for you to say what you're going to say right now? Well, I'm going to get there in a second. So there's okay. a couple of new options um, in Guild Wars 2, right? Um, there's For people who want to play competitively or even just have a lot more fun with the game, um, one of the largest things from beforehand, like definitely the first two BWEs, um, was that there was a significant disparity between targets targeting and attacking and keeping in line with or in close up close to enemies in melee versus range right um melee i can say has been significantly improved over the last two betas to the point where i actually before when i was 100 percent no i vastly prefer range in structured or any form of competitive format i can definitely say that melee has improved to the point where it's it's a toss-up now like i I can actually see myself running melee only builds which is just insane to me considering how i came off from the first beta weekend event but saying that there's a couple of new options in the menu items which which i i want to use this as a public service announcement for um so there's order it the, okay looking at the first page of the general settings in guild wars 2 there are two options in terms of interface that a lot of people or general options that a lot of people are have been checking or i believe they come default checked um which significantly inhibit some play styles so there is two options one of them is um auto attacking i'm uh, sorry auto targeting enemies um, which what it does is when an enemy comes to the center of your screen and you hit a button, um, it's actually pretty smart about it. it. It doesn't just immediately switch targets to whoever's in the center of your screen. But if, you, if they're in the center of the screen and you hit a button, so you, you send me indicating to the game that you want to attack this target with the button you pressed, it'll automatically target that person and execute the skill. That's, that's pretty cool. And I recommend for most people to enable that, at least when they start playing. The second one, a new option is um, stop auto-attacking on target change so what that means is if you are um if you've stopped attacking targets for, for example in pve and you you don't want to um continue to attack it or you're retreating for from for example or you want to you want to lose aggro for example um you can tar- target change to something else and you will stop attacking your original target which is excellent for pve now the problem comes into it where um, if you enable both um, auto targeting and stop auto attacking on target change, what will happen is if you're trying to um, strafe around someone and someone else, or for example, an engineer's turret comes into the second the center of your screen, and your camera is pointing away from them. So, so for example, if you're keeping them on the, ed- on the edge of your camera, like I do when I'm strafing to get a better view of the rest of the battlefield, um, you will now change target 
to the whatever's in the center of your screen now, for example, a turret, and stop auto-attacking your original target. That That's the combined effect of using those two options. That completely fucks over a lot, a lot of how I play range, and I bet a lot of how other people play range as well. Because one of the significant advantages of range in Guild Wars 2, because you can continue to use skills while moving, is that you can... Um, it's strafe. You, you can move around. You can change your camera angle. You can do other stuff while continuing to attack your original target. So what I'd highly recommend, and want to use this as a soapbox for, and a PSA, is for you to disable at least one of those options, if not both, when you're playing Guild Wars 2. Do not enable um, or stop auto-attacking targets in PvP at least. I, I can definitely see it's... um its usefulness in pve but in pvp i would very much recommend to disable the option and i would also pretty much recommend disabling st- um auto targeting as well like because it, tab you just hit tab just hit c for closest target tab also targets the closest person or just click on them like i'd recommend that over um the sem- the semi defective way of of um auto targeting because inevitably this will happen inevitably you will you will have someone else in the center of your screen than the person you're intending to attack hit a button and it'll change targets for you which you don't want um so that's just a public service announcement now now beyond that that was like half the reason i wasn't having fun with range as much fun as i used to this beta but that, that was fixed when i found this option so i won't be talking about it too much um key bindings so i i, I changed to on oh, Tarkin's suggestion, is this the razor advertisement? You're. I I, I changed on Tarkin's suggestion to ESDF um, for Guild Wars Two for this entire beta weekend. I, I gave it a, a solid try. Um, so what the that, what that was was I used skill one through five on the keyboard on my left hand um, to for one through five, and then I, I rebound six through ten around ESDF, so I'd have easy access to all ten skills on my left hand. I played Elementalist. And that plus hitting F1s made it pretty much fucking impossible to do everything I needed to do on my left hand. Tarkin, what what are your thoughts on this? Is he here? So F yeah, here is just terrible. It's, you you have to <laughs> commit to using your special ability, and you really can't uh, move or use other skills at the same time. Yeah, because like a, a good, a good crazy thing about the original Guild Wars and World of Warcraft and stuff is that you stop when you cast. So you don't have to have your fingers on the movement keys while you're casting, right? Like, Duran, I, I assume you'd, you'd agree with me on this one, right? Yes. Yeah, so you, you can essentially find a spot, stop there, and then just start on all your cooldowns. You can start moving through your skills. You can't do that in Guild Wars 2. If, to be an effective player, both in melee and range, you have to be able to be continually moving. Um, so having movement skills on your left hand, for I, I want to talk about the Nostromo here in a second. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, I'll let you talk about it anyway, because I didn't <laughs> end up buying one. Um, so using your movement skills on your left hand makes means that if you want to commit to an F1 skill or as an elementalist changing your tunements, which is all through F1 through 4, as well as using some of the more distant skills if you're using the standard keybind set, which you shouldn't. As as Rawson indicated, it's, it's probably better to try a shift bind system or a different binding system in general like ESDF. Um, you kind of have to remove your fingers from WSD or whatever your movement keys are and hit that button. And in a competitive format, and why I'm lumping this into the PvE, PvP section is um, you want to be able to keep moving, and that is a significant disadvantage for you as a player. Like you do not want to be, have to remove your hand from your movement keys to be able to hit a button. Like, even if you have big hands, you only have like three to four main fingers for a skill execution in most key- keyboard setups. Maybe some setups involve using your thumb as well, and I, I can see the advantages of that. But either way, it's just not particularly effective if you have a normal keyboard. So what I did this weekend using SDF, it convinced me that it didn't work. Like I just couldn't be competitive while staying to just a normal keyboard setup and having nothing on my on my mouse or anything like that. Just using my my left hand for both movement and all skill execution and F1 through 4. So how so did the you two fix options, the problem? The two options I had was to get a gaming pad and I wanted I want Duran to extol the virtues on that or a gaming mouse. So uh, run, run me through what you do, Duran, in terms of um, your setup for how you do skills in Guild Wars 2. Uh, well, if anybody hasn't used a Nostromo before, first off, I have to say it has an extremely high learning curve um, compared to just going from, like, say, a, you know, three or four button mouse to an MMO mouse. Um, mostly because 
probably the biggest change is instead of controlling your character with WASD, uh, you're actually controlling your character with uh, a sort of a directional analog pad thing. Yeah, um, so the Nostromo looks like, like it looks like like three rows, I think it was, of five keys, and then like a, a directional pad where the thumb would be on a, on a rest. It's like yeah, a left two, hand kind of like... Two rows of five and, and one row of four, but yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and so, and so, so basically, you, like you, you control your character with that, which that, if you play console games, like that alone isn't really that big of a change, um, generally. Moving to WSD on your thumb, yeah. So it's, yeah. I, I guess it's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's really that's not really a big change. Um, the biggest change really is going to be in just getting used to key bindings on this this single hand, kind of this grid um, with with your with your left hand, um, and also having kind of a, a limited but yet um, flexible uh, number of keys. So essentially, what, what what the way I basically play is I have um, you know movement obviously bound to the analog thing, um, and then I have one through four, uh, one being my index finger, four being my pinky, um, and then on the right of my pinky, on what is called the, the number one button, um, I actually will use as a shift modifier. And what I've done is I've rebound F1 through F4 abilities to shift one through shift four. Uh, so if I if I'm playing Elementalist, for instance, and I'm in in fire, and I want to change over to um, wind spec, then I'm just going to hold shift and press the three button on the Nostromo, and that actually helps me a ton and makes playing the Elementalist on on the uh, Nostromo extremely easy. Um, because so then essentially, I have... you have a situation where you're moving with the thumb, and you can execute all your skills and all your F abilities with just your four fingers on your left hand. Yeah. Yep. And and okay. the only other That's the only good. other button you really need on something is uh, you need an interact button for uh, resing people, which there's a button directly above your thumb that works great for that. Um, and then there's also uh, you need something something uh, bound to tab, which I use a, a mouse button for, um, so that if you need right. to tab target through stuff, you can. Um, but otherwise, as an elementalist, you don't need weapon swapping, but I do have kind of a, a bottom corner button that I can reach very easily with my pinky uh, mapped for that for other classes. And that works out pretty well, too. So, so do you do you feel that you can be competitive? You can move while casting. You can do everything you need to do with the Nostromo in your left hand. Absolutely, and and I was honestly really kind of worried about it. This is the first game we're going in. It took a lot of of kind of figuring out to to find kind of the best key bindings because in most MMOs, your buttons are basically one through four, and then directly below that, uh, five through through eight, and then if you need more buttons past that, it's just shift modifiers for one through four and five through eight. Um, however, with Guild Wars two. You have you know your standard one through ten abilities, uh, but then you also have those F one um, changes, weapon swaps, interacting, and tab targeting. So you have a lot more going on than you you would in the standard demo, even though you have less technical buttons uh, for your yeah. Your, and your you have bar. to be moving the whole time. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's a, that's, that's a huge thing too. Yeah. So so the nice part about that is because my thumb is is fully um, character movement that controls. That, that frees up all the rest of my fingers for other abilities. So I can actually be strafing around a target, you know, right, holding right click for uh, camera control so that I can strafe around a target. And while strafing around the target, I can be switching between specs and, and popping abilities. It, which is, yeah, which is what you need to be able to do. And, and that's kind of why I put that in this section for the PvP stuff. But just, I, I definitely, just to, to, um, to break it down, that's the Razor Nostromo we're talking about. It's it's by Razor. Um, have you had any, like many of the um, criticisms re- leveled at Razor products has been stuff like uh, just like durability and stuff? Have, have you had any problems like that with your Nostromo? How long have you had it? Um, I've had it, I believe I bought this uh, right before Star Wars The Old Republic came out. So that would have been like okay, December-ish. So just a couple ish. months. Yeah, um, it's like six months. Yeah, yeah so and, months now. And, and as of yet, I've had no problems with it whatsoever. It, it's worked cool. out great. I think your statement to me is that you can't really picture playing an MMO without it now. Yeah, that's that's the one thing uh, I would I would caution people is is if you do decide to go down the Nostromo rabbit hole, um, expect to <laughs> pretty much be invested in Nostromos as long as you are playing MMOs because it is I, I literally could not imagine trying to go back to WASD control um, with 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 MMOs. It just wouldn't work, especially since more and more MMOs are moving towards like actual active combat and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, like and, I, and I would also, and I, I would definitely also warn uh, before we, we move on to to your experiences with what you're using. Um, I would also caution people to not pick this up like f- for kind of their launch week of Guild Wars Two. You definitely need to give yourself at least a good solid week of playtime with it 
Um, oh yeah, so get it before, before then. You, get it significantly yeah. before then. Yeah, get it before then. Try it out in whatever other MMO like game you're playing, um, and and just kind of get used to it. And and, and it, I will also say it's not for all all game styles. Like I would I would not use this thing to play Batman <laughs> or to play right, Starcraft. Cool. <laughs> now now here comes the big deal where I got to figure out now how to get my SciTech X52 working with, uh, <laughs> with Guild Wars 2. <laughs> well, you, you're um, probably the the control case in this one, Ross. And so, so you have a G9X like I do, um, or I, I also have in my, in my case. Do, do you, have you played Guild Wars 2 competitively? Do, do you feel as disadvantaged for having a normal keyboard and the G9X as your only control interfaces? No. <laughs> is that denial <laughs> no actually i don't I, I don't understand the the whole ordeal with with you know buying you know completely specialized little cases because to me i with a game like guild wars 2 i the reaction times necessary are pretty generous. I mean, we're not talking about like Quake Three or anything like that. Oh, here, I don't know, man. Where, where you need you know microsecond timing. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm I'm telling you, no, it, it doesn't require that great of reflex because it requires more than most MMOs. But yeah, most MMOs are made for fucking dollars. So screw it. <laughs> uh, the the thing is, I don't. I I think it's 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 a crutch in a lot of ways like going True. oh look i can i can hit my my hotkeys ever so slightly faster mm, I, no, I, I would say ross i'll, in, I'll in, say you're being both sensationalist in, in that point but there yeah, is in, in some s- in a crutch yeah yeah in some ways you can call it a crutch because once you started using one like you'll never want to go back off of it but i can absolutely tell you with certainty um since i bought bought this or even you know back whenever i was using a wow um steel series mouse as opposed to the mouse i was using before that like you do actually feel and see results where you are playing the game better like you just straight up can play the game better with those peripherals it, it kind of comes down to the age-old fighting game discussion of a fight stick versus a gamepad uh, or many other games like a um flight stick well, versus a key mouse for flying games like it's, well, it's that's so, not an so, argument that, yeah, that's not really much of an argument. Uh, if you're if you're playing a flight sim, yeah, you want to use a flight stick. If you're playing a, a fighting game, yeah, you probably want to use an arcade stick. The, I would the argue thing that is it's the, now that case for yeah, some if you're, of if these you're more playing, action-oriented MMOs. Yeah, if you're playing an MMO, you should be using an MMO mouse. Like that or, argument, no, or right. a stromo. I, I don't I don't think they're actually designed for that though. Yeah. Now the flight sims are designed for using a flight stick. Right. The fighting game is designed for using an arcade stick. Well, an MMO an MMO company designing their game specifically for some ridiculous twenty something button mouse is true. a bit ludicrous. That, that, Most I, people I, I, aren't I agree going to own that, that they haven't designed it from the ground up for that. Um, but what I can say is my criticisms that you can't on one hand do everything you need to do in a timely manner effectively, unless you have significant practice. Like you'd have to, you have to put, you have to go Maybe well out of your way. you should just be an agile person, Sinek. That's your problem. <laughs> You're just not agile um, enough for this game. Because the first skill was they, there was only eight skills and there was no F1 skills. So everything worked out fine. Like you could, you could do that with one hand very easily. Yeah. In WoW, you don't have to move and cast at the same time. But in Guild Wars 2, you do you can't you have to move and cast at the same time and there is 14 buttons you need to be able to press at any given time whilst also moving and all in your left hand and you in the default setup and i'd argue that at some point you have to say hey that's that's not normal no normal person can do that on just one hand with what is essentially uh, just four fingers like at, some, at some point, I have to say that your your argument is valid for MMOs up to this point, but when it comes to now, I I, I can't really side with you in terms of Guild Wars Two. And, right, and I convinced and, myself. And, I tried multiple keybind setups. Yeah, and, and we're not saying it's necessary. We're not saying you can't play an no. MMO or you can't play Guild Wars Two without a Nostromo or without an MMO mouse. We're we're simply saying that it makes the game uh, it allows you to do a lot more. Um, I guess it easier. Yeah, that's just twenty percent more do of the game. Without the... <laughs> 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 I, 
Um, so, so to transition off there, I like, so I, I, I was with Nostromo, I was on board with Nostromo, like Durin's experience with it totally convinced me to go around that path. Um, I have a G9X as my main daily driver mouse and I, I love it. It's the Logitech G9X. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing mouse. Um, especially for shooters, like there's just the sensitivity on the sensor on it. It's, uh, everything's fantastic. Micro gear is a great system. Anyway, so I went to the store looking for a G, for a Nostromo and none of the places I went to had it in stock. Um, and I couldn't. Oh, yeah. I was I was gonna be surprised if they did have it in stock. I'm like, wow, <laughs> you have such nicer electronics retailers than we do. I, yeah, I, like I, just, I actually went down to Best Buy to look at mine before I went and bought it on Amazon. Yeah, yeah I wish really? I could do that. I yeah. wish I could do that. Um, it, really, all the places yeah. around here will just try and be like, I don't know, do you want a cell phone? <laughs> <laughs> well, these guys we got we got the new Nostromo Android is. one. These guys like, yeah, we have that. We'll come be we'll be coming back in like a week. It, it was just like a period of time, but not of those guys were in stock at the moment they would have let me um test them out if they had them uh so i, I remember when radio shack had radios <laughs> radio shack, don't even remind so me of that place when i was there i was like okay uh, so the drama is out i don't want to wait um but well, if, if I might, I don't want to have to wait. I, I want to see if there's what my other options are. So next to me was a logitech um g700 and if people don't know that, it's like pretty much the top line gaming mouse. It's made for a palm grip versus a claw grip. I'm a claw grip kind of guy, and so is Durin, I believe. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, it's an excellent mouse. It's, it's, it's uh, got a fantastic sensor on it. It's got it's got the um, micro gear scroll wheel, which I which I love. With has four buttons on the side, three buttons next to the um, left mouse cl- mouse click, all of which are indented in different ways. So you can get really easy um, thumb control and left well pointing finger control over them because they're distinct significantly distinct and i I highly recommend the g700 if you only want seven keys on your right hand side which is to be fair enough for most people only seven only seven um because what i would be doing is at the moment i'm using my thumb button for calling targets yeah it's wireless but you can play it wirelessly with extension cable because it only comes with one meter cord so you kind of need an extension cable. But with an extension cable, you can make it entirely wired. It, it sends data over the wired when it's plugged in. So that would be my recommendation. Like for most cases, for most people, in fact, I would say get the G700. It's an amazing mouse. Assuming but you're a palm you got grip. something else, didn't you, Cynic? So uh, I, it's a palm grip mouse, and I need a claw grip, right? I, I, I just can't. I can never go back to palm grip. I was a palm grip when I was a kid, but for the last, what, 12 years of my life, I'm a claw grip guy. Um, if people don't know there just google it it's it's very there's a very um significant difference between two ways of holding a mouse um and there's pictures online which are far more informative that can be over the over a podcast format so I, I i next like just i went a couple stores over essentially it was a drive but whatever anyway i went a couple stores over and they had a razor um display without an astromo high five um but a razor display and sitting there was this sleek black mouse which I, which <laughs> I can already see the checks rolling in into Cynic's <laughs> mailbox. It's like, oh, it's the check from Razor. Mouse, black mouse. Pretty much all of their mice. No, but like no calling. I couldn't see any calling on it. It just looked like a black thing. Um, Did he mention this mouse? This mouse also cured his cancer. So yeah, yeah it cured my cancer. Too. So I, I went up to He it also and found and an $8,000 check inside the mouse, <laughs> which he, he's now using to tell us the story. So, now, so I went ahead, up to it. And well, I never, I didn't actually get that mouse, sadly, in the end. Um, I went up to it, and it was the original Razer Naga. It turns out to be. I looked at the left-hand side, and I saw all the buttons. I was like, what? I didn't know it was this small. It's actually really small. It's a really small mouse, and I have small yes, hands. So I was like, okay, I didn't know it was that small. I thought it would be huge. That's freaking 12 buttons on the side of it. And I put my hand on it, and it was like, it was perfect. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it was perfect. Um, the Razer Naga right size for my hand and that's a very big big distinction for a lot of people out there and for people who use palm grip for smaller hands i use claw grip um it, it might it's, it's probably too small like during i believe your experience is the razor naga is too small right yeah yeah i i had bought that one originally and i have large hands and long fingers and that mouse absolutely did not work i i, yeah. I could i could use all of about three buttons on it exactly but again there's like stuff Why like don't... the Logitech G600, which is coming out now, um, which might be better for people with larger hands. And I, you, I definitely you say can that. also 
you can also try out the other great Razer products, such <laughs> as the Star Wars The Old Republic gaming mouse for the low, low price of $140. Well, yeah, I, I know you too can have Razer 17 fucking buttons on your goddamn mouse. As a company. Like, Razer's a company I, I can't really get behind. I, don't, I, don't, I can't really say anything about the durability of this mouse yet because I've only had it for a while. And I have to say that the the biggest um, negative factor about the G... For, not the G... So not, the, the Razer Naga is that they tend to break. Like Razer doesn't have the greatest in terms of um, uh, durability or any form of like customer service. But I'll get to there in a second. So the Razer Naga, the original version with the cool blue lighting, which which I hate. I hate lighting on my mice. I, I, the thing that sold me was a it fit perfectly on my left hand. B it's a grid format um, layout for the buttons on the side, which I, works for me as a console gamer. Like I, I can. I can really easily hit every button on that grid. Well, nine of the 12 buttons on that grid, which is fair I mean, enough. it works for you as a disgusting pig. Yeah, and that's what it, costs it looks amazing because it, it's, I, I didn't know you could turn all, all the lights off and make it just look like this black thing. It, it just doesn't look like some shitty gaming mouse. So Black thing yeah, they does were, not sound They were selling for $150. It doesn't look like a shitty gaming mouse, <laughs> but... <laughs> they were selling it for $150, um, so I never end up getting the original name, na- na- Razer Naga. What I end up was... Jesus, it's the, 80 bucks. The Razer Naga Molten Edition. Molten God. Edition? God, I didn't realize you got, got the like, Molten Edition. Why don't why, why, why don't they just name it Killer Edition or? Well, no, 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 dude. The really Molten Edition you see is it. the Wow one. <laughs> oh, Cynic you're has using a Wow, a Mal Mal branded, no, wow no, branded they're mouse according for... according to the website, they are both quote unquote expert MMO <laughs> gaming mouse. <laughs> I am an expert at MMOs. Why? Yes, my life is fucking empty. Why do <laughs> I used to be like Rosen? <laughs> you have no idea how surprised I was in myself. I, I would put it on par, if not greater than your love of Dynasty Warriors, which I'll bring up as a negative <laughs> factor right now, um, to my Jesus conversion, like my Dynasty. instant and amazing conversion after just trying it out in store... And getting a nine thousand dollar check from Razor, I never you... thought I'd like it. I, I, I've always been the guy who, like, who the fuck needs fucking shitload of buttons in your right hand? Dude, you know, you do remind you really me of um, those people on those infomercial buttons. commercials that are like, yeah, he's... yeah, it works really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, but yeah, wait, I, there's I, more. I, well, there's, you could there's... also you could also get the Razor Naga Epic, which is an elite. MMO gaming mouse. Not to be confused wireless, with an though. expert okay. MMO gaming mouse. So bad. No, Rosson, like, you, you want to make fun of somebody. Wireless I'm, I'm, better. Rosson, you want to make fun of somebody. I am using currently a Nostromo and a uh, Cyborg MMO7 mouse. So I have an MMO just, mouse just, with a bunch double, of... I'm, I'm, not making MMO fun of I'm not making fun of anybody except for Razer's marketing department. Oh, I agree. <laughs> I, 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 some, I have yeah, to. Absolutely. And the Molten is, again... I can see the red patterning in daylight and it is, like, so fucking ugly. But it is... An incredibly good perspective. I, I did a um, randomization test in the original Guild Wars. What that does is I mapped all nine keys, or I, I mapped across the um, in stages across the mouse uh, sections of eight keys. Um, ran into the original Guild Wars, test my execution levels, then randomized the skills and the skill bar to test my ex- execution levels. Then and then remapped nine keys to the next stage of it um, of, of keys, and it continued that around the whole so mouse. Like rigorous. A rigorous testing, testing to that's s- yeah, to s- rigorous stress test. Yeah, to to see if I if I can actually uh, justify the purchase to myself because I'm not going to recommend it unless I I can say yeah I, I I think this is a really good thing and I can say right now that this or you is got paid game by changing. Razor. Which you this did. is game changing. I do I I I can now hit or easily all the buttons required for it was to whilst moving no problems. And that's just for, well, of course this is from testing with other games, but I, I assume I assume that the basics transfer over to Guild Wars 2. And, and, and so by now, you get that, a free that's, Razor t-shirt. That was t-shirt. the end of my keybind quest. Like, I went through, like, four different keybind setups to try to get it working for Guild Wars 2, and in the end, I just got a fucking Razor Naga. I feel kind of sad about that, you know? A lot of ways Wait, to so is it, like, but... World of Warcraft logo on it? Or uh, right? No, it's, it's just this shitty Razor. Uh, it yeah, looks yeah like it has, like, the Razor logo, and then it has, like... Like cracks, red cracks, like, yeah, like red cracks all through it. Yeah, but, so but that way, if it's actually off. broken, you'll never be able to tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And the final note of that is, so Razer does have a shitload of complaints in terms of durability, and so what I'm actually doing now, and perhaps just as crazy as everything I said so far, is that I'm fucking dual mousing. I have what? two mice 
hooked up to my oh, computer. Jesus. Um, the Razer not good for just for MMOs, but for day to day daily driver, I still have my G9X, which is. Oh, I thought you meant better. you were using Why those not? at the same time, like while playing Guild Wars, like <laughs> no. switching over to this mouse now. <laughs> Why don't you just buy like a bunch of Sega Genesis controllers? Uh, <laughs> give them all. I'm sure there's Genesis to USB converters, and just go from there. No, like take them I, all over dude, your chair. I used, I used to be like that, and I, I have to say I'm a convert. This, it's a great mouse. I, I, oh my god, like I need I need to do the Genesis controller method for DCS A10C. <laughs> <laughs> and with that that's enough pl- product placement for today's episode and we aren't getting paid by razor just in case you are oh well, well, I, 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 I can't say either way let's just say that i wouldn't how about this if i was getting paid by razor the fact that you i wouldn't disclose off. the fact because a you're our audience and b i wouldn't want to give any of my money to these assholes <laughs> so, <laughs> if you're getting paid by razor you need to cut some checks to us that's all i'm saying no that's, right. that's i'm not getting paid uh, by anybody <laughs> <laughs> what about yes. their awesome <laughs> Razer gaming systems? Oh god! Like, yeah. Again, aside from the Stromo and the Naga, I can't speak to any of their products. None of us can, can get, really. But you can get a twenty eight hundred dollar gaming laptop that will last you maybe three months. <laughs> oh, and there's also alternatives. Like no, I, just just to round things out, like there are alternatives. Again, there's the I believe there's Logitech G13, which replaces, which is the uh, direct competitor to the Nostromo. It's got more buttons on it. Um, it's Logitech, so it's built better, and it's it's perhaps a little bit bigger, but it's also flatter. And a lot of people just seem to prefer it. Um, that's for the left hand gaming pad kind of thing. For the right hand side, Logitech has the G600. Um, which is their new gaming mouse. It's got, again, the 12 keys along the side and two keys, extra keys at top, um, which doesn't have micro gear, so it doesn't have the freewheel option, which I love. Um, but it's, it's still, it's a Logitech, so it's built like a rock. It's a bit bigger than the Razer Naga, so made for people with bigger hands. So if you have that problem, you can probably check that out as well. And I'd definitely say, look at the other options. Don't just go by what we say here. But personally, yeah, I'm, I'm a convert to the Naga, and Duran's a convert to the Nostromo. So, hey, Get, that's how check we're going to be competitive. Lo- check out the Logitech Cube. <laughs> indeed so moving on that's not that's not a joke moving on um we can finally talk that i guess that's most of the pv segment i, I we can round out with uh, world versus world um i think oh. Duran summed it up really well in that the new additions to world versus world the um second the secondary objectives of adding uh, i think they're called scouts or whatever um Centuries. there's new Sentries, they're single dudes with a normal cap point around them that they stand in specific places around the map, which can be owned by people. Um, you can attack them by a single person. I was able to take one out by myself with the rifle warrior. Um, but I don't know. Is that fun? Like I, I didn't. I, I think Duran nailed it when he said it, it's it's a thing to do by yourself. But in general, War vs. World, you should probably just run with friends. Aside from that, War vs. World continues to be the most awesome thing. Rawson, I think you had some time with War vs. World this time around, right? I, I did. I, I played with a friend. Uh... For the brief time you could get into World vs. World. So that is a great, great thing I completely forgot about. So what Ros- Rosen's saying there, and we had the same, definitely the same problem on Yak's Bend. Um, so what they did this time around for the betas, and I believe they're going to be continuing this to release, is what they've done is um, they've used, before they had, I believe it was 98 servers, something ridiculous to use like that, right? Um, oh. And that allowed them to have a, a lot of servers, but a lot of them were low population. Um I guess we could have put this in news, but either way, what they've done now is kind of like reduce the maximum server count, but use those off servers to increase the capabilities of the main servers, I think it was. Um, So now you have lower servers, lower number of servers, but each server can have way high populations, way higher populations. We found that Yaks Bend, even though it filled up in the first day, they actually increased the server size midday, I think it was the next, I think it was um, on the Sunday of the beta weekend. Um, they increased the server size cap, or maybe it was Saturday night. So it, it's awesome to see them be able to do that. But in general, the server technology is significantly improved so that you have a lot more people on your server. But the, the follow-on effect of that is they, don't, they haven't seemed to do the same thing for World vs. World. So for definitely for Yaks Bend, and I, I, I guess your case as well, Rawson, World vs. World was full throughout a lot of the, the, the um, weekend. Did, did you find that was the case? Oh god, yes. Uh, like I said, there was like one time where I managed to actually get into it. Uh, following day, it was the uh, last day of the beta, um, I managed to... I, I was playing with a different friend, and uh, we, we got into the, the... What's the word? The queue. That's the word I was looking for, queue. <laughs> we got into the queue for the beta, for the World vs. World, and we just we played for hours, and we never even got in. 
Dude, I think the queue system was broken. So on that it point, could be. Um, for queuing up for Twizz- when when World vs World was full, you double click it or you hit B to bring up the um, World vs World map, and you can you can use the B menu to jump to any of the four, the three Borderlands or one central map in World vs World. Um, check out past episodes if you want to know more, more about it, and the wiki, obviously. Um, so. What we found was when we were rolling World vs. World, I think we rolled it for a couple of hours on the Saturday night or something like that. Um, we found that if you're trying to get into it, it is far more effective to just mash. Can I enter this Borderlands? So I just hit B, click, click, B, click, click, B, oh, click, no, click. Oh, no, man. You're stressing the servers. You're and we got it. in. And we all got in. Like it was, it was just a case of mashing it for about, what was it? Like during, how, how many times did it take you? Like eight times? And then you get in? Uh, like fifteen or twenty. Yeah. So, so, so you know so what some, you did there? You butt just, in line and you made yeah, all we, we those people in, wait longer. So I think pretty much the yeah. entire queue system is fucked. Like if I can do that, <laughs> that means there's something wrong. Like there's something seriously wrong with this system. See, if noob, I can we, just we butt were, in line, noob, we were beta testing the queue system servers and we learned that they're <laughs> yeah. broken as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but all of those poor people who are in line should have done the same like, thing we did. <laughs> just fucking on. brute force. Made you think they weren't. Oh, uh, maybe. Well, that we got in. That 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 makes me think they. Oh, were. all right. Well, that yeah. would yeah. work. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's it's it's. I, I think that was a, again part of the problem. The queue system might not be not be it. But aside from that, how do you actually like War vs. World? What did you do, to, uh, Morrison? I I killed people. <laughs> you ran with the Zerg, didn't you? Yeah, I basically I ran with the Zerg. Uh, just mostly, my point was I was playing with a friend. I wanted to show off World vs. World. Did you like him. it? Yeah, he liked it. Um, awesome. I kind of, I kind of wish that you know we could have gotten into a fucking siege at some point. That oh, would have been man. a lot more interesting. Those are, yeah, sieges are, yeah, can siege- be really fun. Can be really fun. Sie- sieges are the main reason that are the main fun of the game for me. The dude, yeah, it's, totally. With with an organized just, group, anyway. It's yeah, it's just basically a huge throng of people all killing each other in a <laughs> closed area. Damn straight. Um, I think also also an interesting point to note here in terms of changes is they've increased the um, because how the partying system works in Guild Wars Two, and this is a, this is very uh, topical in terms of World vs World, is that you have normal parties, which is I believe five people in maximum, and that's what you see on the left hand side of your screen. You can just join friends, whatever. You can be across servers, whatever. Um, so that's the party system. Above that is the squad system. So you can have multiple parties in a squad, and the, the how squads work is you have to have a commander. A commander has access to squad chat, and you can essentially what the idea is for there to be a commander with many with a squad below him, composed of multiple teams, and for him to distribute commands to that team. So that involves there being players who are commanders. Um, to be a commander, you have to get this tome, and I believe. In the first two beta weekends, that term was about three gold to purchase, something along those lines. So I'm very affordable. Um, so the problem they had there was that there were many commanders on field. Um, in fact, it, it kind of diluted it because the entire part of a commander is to be someone you know knows what the fuck's going on um, and you, you're happy with taking orders from. So part of that semi prestige, I guess I could use the word prestige, I'd, not a really good word, but part of that is to make it really difficult to, or make it such that people who have the commander tomes are people that you can you can walk up to like you don't have to know them to be able to trust them so there was a problem in earlier beta events where pretty much everyone their sister could to could afford a commander tome if you just put in a little bit of effort um so what they did now i i believe tarkin was the one who pointed out to me but they've increased the cost of commander tomes to i believe it was like a hundred gold Something ridiculously huge. It was like it was. I'm almost certain it was 100 gold, but might might I might just be misremembering that. So it was almost unreachable, or perhaps um, equivalently, it would take a guild's worth of, worth of effort to raise one of them to commander. Um, Which is smart. I like that idea. Yeah, it's it's just it's an interesting idea. I, I just I just wanted to note that there's a change there. I, I can't. I don't really have. I haven't really oh, decided. So commanders. Remember. How long are you a commander after you buy? Always. You're permanent. Always? I believe. For, I forever? Believe. I believe so. Yeah. So, oh. so eventually that system is just going to break down because eventually right. everybody so will have a commander. so top-heavy, yeah. Kind of, because how com- the commander system works is um, your your icon changes on the minimap to this, this chevron um, when you're acting as a commander. Um, 
the thing there is you have to actually be acting as a commander to get that. So you have to have to actually have a squad below you for that to work. So, so it's all not the just benefits about of the term then. No, it, all okay. the benefits of being commander involve having the term one part, but the other heart side of it is you actually have to have a, peop- a group of people following you. So it's, it's as the game on goes on, more people will have the capability of being commanders, but you wouldn't. I don't believe you'd have the case where um, you'd have too many commanders because by that point people would be more organized, and you'll have uh, what well, what is potentially a couple of commanders with large squads below them. I believe. Why don't they just reset it every two weeks? Like they would change when they change worlds. Because that's gold. a lot of wasted gold. Well, they yeah. could well, reduce the price. Three, three gold again and yeah, make it. Ah, uh, uh, is there is there a too big a point to that? Like, does the system not work? Well, it's well, it just at some point when everyone becomes a commander. Well, it's it's something they could eventually do. I mean, they they could see how this this one works out, and if this doesn't work out the way they maybe thought it would or whatever, um, then they can look at doing like you're saying and maybe reset it with the world be world reset. Well, but, as, it's, as a segue, what about, what about all my gold that I put in? I want to fucking get a refund. God damn it, well, Arena Net! You decided I to invest in you. THQ last year. In that year, case, and all of then the Blizzard needs to refund me a lot of gold for all those uh, <laughs> potions and flasks that I used while I raided. Well, we, we can't use this as a segue because a commander being a hundred gold to buy is kind of about half as much gold you need to get max level. End game armor. Oh, segue, sweet segue. segue. Um, Wait, how can we Brahma. Have discuss the Sura or Silvari yet? Do we have a music? Uh, we, 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 we're getting segue. there because we, right. we discussed it last week. We discussed it last week, well, and for people no who didn't, one, no um, one watched. Plus, that wasn't well, a very informative. I'm going to put that in the show notes, movie. and yeah, for people who are, who are listening now, this episode, it was just me making weird noises live. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is episode 14 episode 13 did happen it was it happened last week it was a live show we've only just posted it to youtube though and i'll include it in the show notes um but you can check it out there it's it's it's, uh, it's, it's not only gonna be on youtube it's it, it wasn't very informative and it wasn't very on topic and we referred to what's on screen a lot so i never made an audio version of it to put on this rss maybe if there's a bunch of people asking for it i could do so but i, I really fun, believe I that youtube's the way to watch it it's um youtube.com forward slash the linking cast to check that out and we say a bunch of our sewer and savari impressions We'll do that again this episode, but perhaps a bit later on. I think one of the new pieces of news, though, is after the beta ended, was that we found out that a lot of people were able to access the um, merchant previewer in, um, I think it was one of the major cities. I think it was Lion's Arch. Uh, Tarkin, do you, do you know more about this? Every um, vendor that sells weapons. Yeah. So, so, like so what that is, is you can, yeah, exactly. You can see what items look like in your character. Yeah, I, I, I saw that in the, uh, in the Silvari area. Yeah, um, but, but. Did, By the way, Silvari area, pretty fucking cool. Yeah. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, but, uh, yeah, so essentially people use the item preview. I think it was in Lion's Ash, wasn't it, Tarkin? No, no, it, every vendor that sells gear has. No, but like the, for a, these armors, I think for the, oh, the end game armors. Yes, I, I think, I think it was. Saw. Yeah, because there's a set of, um armor smiths or whatever in lion's arch i believe it was that has uh each of them has a set of end game armor i think it was dungeon armor i'm not sure why they had the i have no idea what the reasoning is behind this but be each of them had a set of like um of, of the armors you could expect from going to end game dungeons for uh because actually named against the dungeons so you had the aura set and you had um the nightmare set for the uh silvari dungeon area and stuff like that across this and there's i believe it, w- it went crazy on reddit and it went crazy on the giant bomb forums um what someone was able to do was compile a like a huge set of images of how armor oh, looks on every wait. Wait, it went it went crazy on Reddit. Was there like a naked child in it or something? <laughs> God, God damn it, Rosen. God damn it, Rosen. <laughs> so there's a a huge list of images of how every set of dungeon gear looks. Endgame dungeon gear looks on characters. Um, I believe the pricing on it was there's three tiers. Um, tier one is I think was ten gold each. Tier was twenty, and three was thirty gold per, for each piece of the armor. So you're looking at 180 gold Which isn't for. Too bad. A whole well, set. We, we assume we have no idea how the gold stuff will work yeah. out. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I think the coolest thing was uh, we got to see this awesome armor, and obviously it's a huge spoiler if if people would want to consider it that way. But uh, have a look for it. It's on the Giant Bomb forums. Just look for. Uh, I, I'm not even sure what the search term would be. I guess it would be end game armor equals two or dungeon armor equals two. Um, Durin, what are your feelings on the end game armors we saw? 
Um, I think the uh, light armor is the heavy armor for the most part looks really cool. The light armor I feel like is a bit disappointing. Um, wow. Oh, the I, reason, I'd have to agree. Yeah. The reason I, <laughs> the reason I say that is because being that my my main character I think is going to be an elementalist now, not what I had thought maybe before this beta weekend. Um, the, the, it, it seems like it, at least with that gear, and maybe it was the case with medium and heavy to some extent as well, but I mostly paid attention to the light armor. Um, it seemed like they were going for a very specific aesthetic with every single tier, and that was Necromancer. Like, all of it <laughs> seemed to have it. Like, there were maybe, like, two sets that didn't look Necromancer-y. Um, yeah. And, and, and as somebody who wants to play an Elementalist, like, I don't I don't need a fucking skull face. Like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> like just, the Aro one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and a lot of them were like that. Or like fucking horns coming off my helmet. Like I I throw fire. I don't throw souls. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, just to, to lay it out. Like, so there's, there's like what nine sets of dungeon gear. And there's also a set for each of the races, which is unique to that race. So only people from that race can wear them. Um, so we found that, yeah, like in a lot of cases, the light armor for both male and females was... Well, for one, they do the thing where... Most of the male endgame dungeon armor has skirts on the light armor set. Like, what? I don't. I want pants. Like, I just. I don't want pants on my mage. What if Is you're like a serious cross dresser? That, that might be a good thing for you. <laughs> Noob, what are your thoughts on the, the uh, armor? I, 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 I know, like, you didn't like it. And you were like, this, this armor's ugly. But, um. Probably the most disappointing aspect of the armor was, like, the racial armor and the guardian. Like high level racial armor. It's I can't believe you're saying God. You mean heavy armor? It's heavy. The heavy armor. It's yeah, guardians. Right. It's not just it, guardians. It's it's literally <laughs> the fucking seraph armor. And I'm like, really? I get to wear oh, yeah, seraph so armor. Yay! So the top tier human thirty gold per piece armor set is I just. I want to look armor. like Logan Thackeray. <laughs> that guy's a jerk. That guy's a jerk. <laughs> oh, I I I actually saw was Logan though. Thackeray in that. I don't know. No, it does look but you, you, you just look like him, though. And every like female serif. I'm sure you get picked on <laughs> everywhere you go. It's like, hey, Logan Thackeray. <laughs> but uh, does any other armors you looked at, Noob? Do you have any impression? Um, I, I liked some of the light armor. The human. I've, I've been looking just at the human armor because all the right. other races are inferior. Um, but uh, and you wonder why we've we've compared you to Hitler in the past? Well, no, because I'm, I'm I'm not looking at the color of the human skin. I'm just looking at the human race in general, and I can say for a fact that um, I'm going to create a guild <laughs> called Cerberus, and um, I'll invite all of you guys to it. Even my uh, little Asura. Pardon? Even my little Asura. Oh no, no, I'm not going to let <laughs> you represent your little. Actually, no, you're right. Asura are d- adorable, so that's okay. Asura are uh, pretty fucking adorable. Yeah. Um, really? I want to kick them in their fucking... Oh, God. <laughs> so, Rawson, did, did you see any of these armor sets, or did you, did you check out any of this coverage? N- no, okay. I'm, I'm looking at them now, though. Would and you? I, I don't really see a big problem, assuming we're looking at the same ones. Do you like them, is more of my kind of thing. Or which ones do you like? I, I like the Mesmer stuff, but I already plan on playing as a Mesmer because I want to be pretty <laughs> and I want to be a douche. So basically, it's the best of both worlds for me. Cool. And Turkey, did you get to see them yourself? I'm looking at them right now. H- how do you like And them? I'm really not impressed with some of these. Ooh. So th- this, is, this is kind of the... So the opinions on this were about the same as the opinions on Batman. Um... And I, oh, the no, episode, I don't and think I, you can say that because episode, a and lot I, of people liked Batman. And a lot of people like these armors. A lot of people like these armors. But there was a significant portion of the population. In this case, I don't fall on the side of my Batman. I actually like these armors. But um, there's a significant portion who just didn't find them particularly impressive. Tur- Turkey, what are your thoughts? Are, are, how many are you looking at? Are there any that strike you as interesting? I'm looking at mostly the light and medium types. Right. And Do you like I'm not sure about them. <laughs> <laughs> what well, really light and medium? Aren't you a guardian warrior kind of person? I actually like some of the warrior armors on there. I've got it. Yeah, the guardian armors. On there. Some of the heavies look pretty good, but most yeah. of them I really don't like. They seem a bit over the top. <laughs> I, I would actually fully agree. Like pauldrons, man. Um, so <laughs> t- t- to to round it out, because I'm not sure how interesting this discussion would be to most people, but um. I'd say that, so what you can see on there, and I, I definitely encourage you to Google it, is all 
again the the dungeon armor but also see um all the weapon sets uh which are associated with those gun uh, dungeons as well so you have like the the end game rifles great swords axes that kind of stuff you see and i, I believe in my opinion um aside from the fact that males have way too many skirts in the meat light armor set the medium armors tend to look pretty can't cool. Can't appreciate male skirts, man. I can't appreciate male skirts. They're not. They're not skirts. God damn it! Mind. They're robes. They're just. They're just skirts. I can't. Like. I can't. You know that Japanese look, bassist I, on YouTube. I still want to be pretty. God damn it. <laughs> um, aside from that, the, yeah, there's a pretty cool helm. I think it was in one of the medium armor sets. That's just essentially a stormtrooper. Putting that on a Sura is the most adorable thing on in the fucking world. Um, it as, looks so wrong. It looks so wrong. So cool. <laughs> you, you see it, right? Um, Aren't you a little and... short to be a stormtrooper? Anyone get that um, reference? Anyone? I, think... I got the reference. <laughs> yes, it's oh, God. It's not really. Is it? Is it a reference? If it's the you thing reference... from Star Wars. No, he's referencing Lord of the Rings. Yeah. No, I'm referencing Star Trek Nemesis. Oh. Oh God. <sighs> All right. So aside from that, so is um, it, is I think there's like three heavy armors elect. Is anyone else getting a vibe from this armor, like a, a Warhammer Online vibe from a lot of this armor? I don't know. I, I haven't seen it. No, no but, but then again, I think Guild Wars 2 is a good game. So Well, I'm just talking about from an art direction. I, think, I feel like a lot of the, the art that goes into these armor sets looks like maybe some of these people worked on that game. Well, I mean, it's like general general fantasy kind of medieval sort of armor. Some of it, yeah. to some extent, some yeah. But I, there, there's some of this that looks like it could have been pulled directly out of that game and upraised and made it look prettier. Oh, you mean like that Chinese torchlight thing where they ripped off? The model? <laughs> You're saying uh, no? I just, I just, I just wonder. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not seeing the kind of like grim darkness that I would expect from Warhammer out of these, out of these armors. I can't really. Really say so there's a couple I want to uh, highlight or, or just spotlight on before we move on. Um, the pretty much every piece of Silvari themed gear looks fantastic, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Yeah, Hell yeah! Even though they're leaves and branches and shit, like you can, they, they look amazing, especially for the mage sets and even the heavy armor sets look absolutely spectacular. Um, which is kind of like a, a transition, like a, a continuation of my uh, thoughts from last time, which just seems like the Silvari stuff tends to be the more beautiful in every way, just like the character designs and their armor, and, and in my opinion, their um their racial land as well. But we'll get there. Um, aside from that, racist the the Asura uh, light armor racial stuff looks awesome. Um, and it's got it's the essentially you, you kind of look like Zoja. You got the uh, mecha arm in your left hand. And you got you got like robes and stuff. It looks badass, and you got like um, goggles. Um, oh, you look like my Dungeons and Dragons online character. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> um, you get to be Mega Man. Then Aura Aura gear, which is the fi- I, it sounds I think that's the final dungeon in the game. And it's kind of sad that we see this gear now, even before the game's out. But who knows? There's probably more surprises in the game anyway. Looks awesome oh. in pretty much every character. But there's one thing I want to point out as the dumbest thing in the world. There's a set of warrior set of armor in there, I believe, that has like castles as the pauldrons. And oh, I think, God. I think, I think that's the most <sighs> horrible thing. Why and is that just, okay? Like, I why would can't. you wear that to a fight? Like, <laughs> because, well, look at it this way if you go play Guild Wars 2 chess, you are the rook. Right. <laughs> 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 um yeah so the, the check those armors out for yourself um those are the ones i believe are the coolest is it for the weapons i believe dark asuran looks badass seraph looks badass and um nightmare also looks pretty freaking cool like a lot of the I, a lot of the weapon set looks badass i think i think most of the weapons are very under like they're, they're, they're really they're eh. well the dude, exception of, well, the the exceptions of great swords the great rifles, swords look really dude. cool the rest Some of the, the weapons are great no I, I think the rest of the weapons need a lot more work to them and maybe this wow. is just like this is the starting gear, so they they don't want to go completely bald Dude, no, out I, starting out. No, I I think this is I think this is your end game shit right here. Well, no, no, from, I, when I say starter, I mean like this is the gear they're rolling the game out with. Like later oh, right, expansions yeah. and stuff will add other gear that will probably look even cooler, and they don't want to just yeah. load load now. And it's, it's really important to note that these are skins on gear, so these gears aren't statistically better than the stuff you can find when you hit those levels. Also, these are skins which are associated to these merchants and dungeons so obviously there's going to be different skins for crafting um as well as mystic forge and assumedly stuff you'd find from drops so these aren't all of the end game stuff in the game um but yeah it's it's uh, it, it's, it's interesting seeing the divergence some people really love these end game armors and some people just don't um i don't know 
it's kind of like Batman. Um, so moving on from there, I, I think we can finally get to PVE. So for those of you who didn't care about PvP and PVE, I, I, I wanted to do this episode backwards because we never got too much PvP discussion in the past. But we'll finally get to PVE. Um, I think we can start with Rawson uh, because we haven't been around for the last couple of episodes. What did you get up to this weekend uh, for the beta weekend? Oh, for the beta weekend, um, I, I like I said, I for the most part, uh, I've been using the beta as a way to preview uh, classes and trying to find out which ones I like the most. This time, I decided to, of course, I wanted to play as uh, as a Silvari. I didn't get around to playing Asura, partially because I don't like them, but uh, <laughs> I don't. Well, Asura they're, they're like, don't like you, you piece of don't, shit. Don't, you yeah, don't, don't you know what? Don't you know what? You know what? They're, this they're is like the guy who always likes Dynasty oh, Warriors. God. Yeah, Hang on. Can trust him. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I'm dead serious. They're like little Ferengi. If, if you ever watch Star Trek, and and when I when, when they smart. talk, when they talk, you see the little pointy teeth in their yeah. mouth, so and that great. just scares the so, crap out someone of someone. Agrees with so that's me. That's what it is. So that's what it is. Awesome. It's not that you don't like them. It's that you're intimidated by them. Right? No, you're just scared. Like, like I see them like trying to bite my fingers off, and it's just well, yeah, when yes. you're fucked out about them. Yeah, it's scary as shit. No, They're no, they, they, they don't docile, mind it when you say when you call them they ferocious. They mind it when you call them cute, which is yeah. I love. I love that. Anyway, little fucking. Cre- I mean, have you anyway, seen them so I decided to play a Silvari. Also, you're wrong. Well, Tarkin agrees with you, but you're both wrong. It's really yeah, amazing. Except that Asura Durin made, which was just generally scary. Okay, okay. But anyway, back back on track. I, I decided to play a Silvari warrior. And uh, I did the Silvari area, and I also did the Asura area. So and I got it. We can slow down a, a bit. S- but, uh, so, what, what do you. I, I want to slow this down. So, you finally got the ch- your chance at the warrior. How do you like it? Yeah. Uh, I liked it more than I thought I would. Normally, I don't go for melee classes. Although, to be perfectly honest. Like, half the time, I didn't play it as a melee class. You used the rifle, didn't you? I used the rifle. Fuck yeah. Uh, it, it, just, it, it, is, it is, like I said earlier in this podcast, it is uh, it is surprisingly useful. Like, yeah. I thought it would be, like, a crutch. Like, you know, okay, you need a ranged weapon, but it's not going to be very good. No, it turns out it's totally fucking viable <laughs> in both PvP and PvE. Hell yeah. So... Uh, are you with me? Because I said this, like, I think it was, like, the first Lincoln cast ever. Maybe the second Lincoln cast ever. I think the rifle is pretty much one of the most balanced in terms of, like, just how much functionality it has weapon in the game. Because you have a bleed, you have a slow, you have vulnerability. I don't think the with the rifle is exactly You have balanced. a knockback. You have... Uh, well, that, I, yeah. I, I found that the volley was really useful, as well as, uh, yeah. as, well as the endure as with the uh, adrenaline kill shot. In that, with it. Fucking yeah, the huge kill damage. Shot. Yeah, some guy's <laughs> running away. I'm like, all right, fine, and just fucking snipe him. So it's, good, it's really useful. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I I really enjoyed the Silvari area. That said, I think the Asura have a better uh, designed city. Hey, and we'll get there in a sec. So so Silvari, because only two of us played Silvari, and that's why I kind of want to focus them focus on them a little bit more. Noob, did did you get much more experience with the Silvari after <sighs> we did the live show? Uh, I did not. In fact, I, I went back to playing humans. Uh, oh, wow. But Great. Well, that's because he's right, right. Was, yeah. was that because you didn't like them, or because you oh, just no, no, no. I, I didn't want to spoil anymore, to be honest. Okay, like, right. That's, after, that's I got, I, after I got my human to like level 36, I'm like, oh, God. They're just going to wipe this. Why, 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 why do I do this? Oh, yeah, from the, from the last two beaters. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I kind of sort of agree. So, so Rawson, but, did, but did you... Playing as a human, much... I spoiled the game anyway, so I don't know. Yeah, because you're going to play human main anyway. But, um, yeah, yeah Rawson, so... How, how do you feel about the Silvario? Like, what what do you think of the aesthetic? Like, I haven't seen it myself because I'm saving for a release, so don't spoil too much. But how do you feel of the aesthetics of it? Do you do you think that the race has has an identity, or do you think they're just um, green elves? I, I I think they they definitely fit in well with their starting environment. I'll just I'll I'll just go ahead and say that like it what you've seen of them. Yeah, the rest of it fits in. I'm, um, I'm obviously, I'm not going to spoil thing or talk about specifics. Yeah. But you know, get ready for a lot of forests, a lot of uh, overgrowth, a lot of. Uh, can Can I just go ahead and say one specific thing sure, about sure. it that I thought was really interesting? A lot of floating rocks. Really, I haven't seen that. Yeah, cool. a- including uh, including in some areas, uh, using them as platforms. 
God damn it. No. Um, I'm not. I'm. All right, I'll, I'll stop right there. I don't. As far I don't. As specific no, no, stuff, not even spoilers. I just. I just don't. I can't be party to platforming Cynic, in Guild Wars. Cynic's a bad I'm person because he doesn't like I any of the jumping puzzles. I just can't. I just. I've been well, known. I mean, I've been known to go all the way up to a vista just to just to prove that I can fucking beat it and then just not even take the fucking vista because I hate. I hate platforming in Guild Wars. Anyway, that's just me. Apparently, well, during like. Why, why don't you do the vista then? I, I mean, it's, it's free XP. No, he's I, never I, I, gonna I'm, get a hundred percent on a single map. No, is what's gonna no, happen. because oh, God, fuck platforming. Just fuck that shit. Well, um, fuck you. It's not that difficult. I found. Well, honestly. some of them. Some of them are. Some of them are. Um, I, some of them yeah. are 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 yeah. a little bit tricky, but I just I don't want like, I just don't want I just like it. I don't think I ever died doing a platforming segment. Oh, I well, I died platform. just walking around in Rat Assume, but that's something else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll <get there. laughs> yeah, um, you can die in the Asura area. So, right now. did you feel like the actual like? Cause did did they have, did they have the um, ambient voice acting in? And did it feel finished? Yeah, I, they definitely had the ambient voice acting. Did, and did you feel in, that um, um these these Silvari like bad ambient voice acting in like there's just the general like people you've talked to in the Silvari? Did you feel they had a racial identity or did did you get much from them? I yeah, I mean they they definitely talked about they talked about exactly what you think a bunch of plant <laughs> elves would talk about, <laughs> which is like like every single little little like saying they have has to deal with plants in some way. Okay. Yeah, it's, did it's, you like it, or did you find it a bit boring, or like wearing? I the ambient dialogue towards the end, I I can kind of see like how the ambient dialogue would get kind of annoying. Why they may turn that off eventually. Oh, man, um, ambient dialogue's great. In fact, I I went I didn't go AFK, but I sat for like around twenty minutes just listening to ambient dialogue, and they actually wait. Is this in Divinity's or in there. um in in uh, Claypool? Okay, so so not so not in the Grove. No. Okay, I, I, well, it's. I assume if the ambient dialogue is di- dialogue is either funny or like just interesting, it could be cool. But if it's yeah, if if it's like stuff like oh plants, blah. Um, I'm not, I, I can see that being annoying as as Rolston says. I don't know. It depends. Yeah, but it's it's not like Skyrim kind of like they approach you and talk Aaron to you. Like most of the time, you won't right, hear yeah. it unless you're you're listening in on their conversations. Yeah, I, I guess I guess I could probably my brain will eventually tune it out. Yeah. Right. So, so would it, you, it's like you, the same like, as you running around in a street, and if you heard someone, <laughs> like you don't necessarily always hear conversations. Oh, I blame yeah. Obama. Blame Obama. <laughs> yeah. So, did, how would you rate these so Like, did did you think they there was a really good execution, or do you think they could, there's something to improve? I, I think it was definitely well executed. Probably uh, one of the best ones that I've I've done so far. Keep in mind, I've only really done the uh, the other three. I didn't really do the Asura oh, yeah, starting right, area. Right, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's definitely up there as far as one of the better ones. I, I, feel, I feel sorry for the listeners who want to hear more about this so far. Because, I, I, yeah, Noob saving it for release, like whatever he didn't touch. I, I saved pretty much the entire Savari area for release. Um, Durin, did you even touch Savari? Yeah, I did I did a fair amount oh. of it. Oh, really? I, I, like, I didn't. I never asked. So, I how do you like yeah, Savari, Durin? I, I didn't leave the 1 to 15 zone, so I basically just kind of did some of that area. I, I played a uh, Savari Thief. Um, okay, cool. These are awesome. They are pretty awesome. I have not tried Thief it's yet. It's pretty yeah, good. The, Thief Buzz I think it's my positive. second favorite class now. Wow, I, and I'm, I, still, I'm still going with Mesmer. And I didn't even get into like the range <laughs> stuff, but just like like double daggers is a lot of fun. Uh, sword daggers pretty good, too. But anyway, going back to Savari. Um, Savari Zone, I felt like it was pretty good. Like, I, I think, I think I maybe still enjoyed the Asura Zone more. Um, but I mean, like, like I told you during the beta weekend, like the Savari stuff is good, but I I don't think it's necessarily something that was worth saving for release. Um, I I would (laughs) say between the two, the the Asura maybe would have been like the better, better save. I couldn't resist, and anyway, yeah, <laughs> so so did did you? Uh, pretty much the same questions. Like, did, how do you feel the racial identity was? Do you think they they um, executed well? Like, how was the ambient dialogue? Was it too green, or did they seem to have like? Were they funny? Like, what do you feel about the Savari as a race? I they definitely weren't. Funny. I honestly pretty much mostly just tuned it out. I, okay. I didn't really pay attention to it. Part, partly because I was mostly just wanting to see the zone okay. and see what uh the different renowned hearts were that they had in the area like what they were going to have you do basically and how you interacted with the area i wasn't so much like wanting to really delve deep into the race until after launch okay, did you do that one with like the nightmare part 
Uh, no. Oh, that one was really cool. You could have done that. One. I think I think I stopped right before that. <laughs> this is so ambiguous. Yeah, there's this like dragon that pops up. and It's really crazy. Oh, don't, oh, I didn't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Nothing like that happens, but it's also really fun. <laughs> 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 so Rosen's not too impressed, but not too let down either. No, no, no. no I was, I was he, gonna he something say different. something. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. okay. I thought he meant like the the no, no. first thing you I don't see. Know. I don't oh, yeah, no. I don't oh, right. I, I like the. I, I, like the I like the intro. Did you not like the? I don't want to know. Though? Stop it. Just Rosen. stop. No, we're just, just talking moving about. On. Hey, hey! You can't just <laughs> cater this to your own taste, man. I, I, I totally can. It's my podcast. <laughs> this is Look, terrible. I'm just gonna go ahead and say this right now. There is a crossover with Guild Wars Two and Dynasty Warriors. Oh God! Uh, the, what? That's Hacking interesting. Slash where? That's pretty cool. Look, I'll, all I'm saying is I fought Lu Bu. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Which is good. Which is good. Um, so he's d- a general. So I guess the, the general consensus here is that Savari is pretty awesome, um, but damn, did they nail the Asura. Because, well, aside from Tarkin. That's disgusting. Tar- Tarkin hates They're them. like little kids. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They can really like them. Kids. Can, I, can I dress them up sexy like my Terra character? So I like the fact that two of us don't like the Asura, but at least in my case, like I was saving the Savari for release, because, and I, I, I was pretty much was successful like, in doing switch. so. Yeah, so I, I I did that because I thought Silvari would be obviously my off main. Like my main would be human as always. Um, so I tried out the Asura, expecting to just have something new for this weekend, and I just absolutely fell head over heels in love with the Asura as a race. That's just yeah. Let's just try to keep this unsexualized. The Asura as a race <laughs> is absolutely spectacular. Mm. Noob, mm, oh. pointy teeth. <sighs> They're so adorable. <laughs> um, I I started out this beta thinking Asura were fucking awful. Like my my general consensus on Asura from Guild Wars One was there were like disgusting, like naked rat looking things that are absolutely they, gross. They're they're like a bunch of little creepy Ferengi yeah, and they all what, have Asperger's. That's syndrome. what I thought. <laughs> like I had Ross's views, but then I saw the light because I stumbled into the character creation. And, hey. Oh my god, I want to crush their faces <laughs> with my thighs. I have they to give a call out to Subjugation, uh, one of the other, the officers of our guild who made the cutest Asura. It's a little, like, little female Asura. Asura bowl, as Zumi Ramen would say. Oh god, let's, I don't, let that die. Let that die with that podcast. <laughs> let episode 13. Oh no, I did not that's not gonna hear. die. Oh god, that's that's not die. it's accurate. Asura bowl will live on. <laughs> He made the most ador- like uh, yeah subjugation. You win. You win. You won Guild Wars two with that Asura oh. design. It was perfect. But um yeah, it's dude, so Asura. Oh, but like the anim- like dude, how how do you feel about the animations? Because me, that's what sold. That's what oh, really the sold. Animations. Oh my god, the <laughs> animations are like the best. Like they they did so much work on those animations, and I, you could you could dance. I, I really did kind of like. <laughs> I did kind of like the whole fact that they stumble yeah. whenever they oh, yeah. jump. Oh yeah, yeah, and they're, they're, yeah, exactly. Like when they when you're jumping off things, the arms kind of swinging, like flailing around. Because uh, they're they're so fucking big headed. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. Grossly like when they, when they hit the ground, like their head just kind of keeps going and like nearly. Hits <laughs> like the if ground you well. if you run maybe, sideways, maybe it can and keep stop, going into the fucking concrete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sideways, the sideways walk. If, you, if, you, the if they go sideways, if they like lose balance for a bit, and they try to regain their balance. It's absolutely it's, it's so so absolutely oh. fun. Like because I, I made an Asura, and the first thing I had was like the the starting area for the Asura is beautiful and it's spectacular in many ways. Um, I love the fact that you could it, just in Guild Wars Two, you can look at architecture from every race and be able to easily tell them apart. The Asura, not only do they is the Asura architecture pretty, well, entirely unique in Guild Wars, but it's also relatively unique in terms of like comparisons to other fiction. Like, I haven't seen too much uh, in I, the way it's, of it's a lot like Aztec almost sort of. Yeah, it's it's like yeah. it's like future Aztec. It's it's uh, Civ Aztec if you take them. No, I, mean, I think of the right. No, no, either no, way, no. It's, it's, just... it's more like a magical Aztec kind of thing, right? Yeah, and yeah. it's 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 really cool because they're little people, and so there's these little dudes in these like gigantic spaces. Um, 
and then you have golems and you have like crazy things all the way around. But like that, that was the first thing I saw when I when I made Nasura. But then immediately after that, I ran forward for a little bit, and then I stopped for some reason. And then the stopping animation made me just pause and just stare at it. <laughs> and then you and vigorously was like, masturbated. And then, <laughs> and then I ru- then I ruined my mouse and I had to get a new one. <laughs> Ew. Oh God! That escalated pretty quickly. Imagine what they can do with those little teeth. <laughs> but like it's tr- everything, like moving side to side, jumping, dodging. Like Azura doing a dodge is like a fucking backflip or a forward flip or a side, f- and the head stays in the middle and the body goes around. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. Um. Your voice Everything. turned really creepy there. It's for amazing. <laughs> um, but hey, the thing that the like fuck down, dude. They're just little Ferengi. Which was really cool is the way they hold two-handed weapons. Oh yeah, which is kind of, they kind of just like sling it over their fucking shoulders, like this full badass style. Like I, um, I've totally gotten to a point now where I don't know that I'm gonna make any other race anymore. <laughs> like, I totally had plans of like a human elementalist, uh, you know, uh, Savari thief, you know. I, I, I oh, Norn. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sticking warrior. with my text file. I'm, I, <laughs> but <laughs> now, like pretty much all of those characters, I think are going to be bunched into the Azura just because a combination of, of one, the the animations obviously are amazing, and, and like you said, how they yeah. hold the weapons. Like I want to have a uh, an Azura warrior <laughs> that has a great sword because fuck that weapon hold is awesome. <laughs> um, but probably more than anything, kind of going back to when we were talking about the gear earlier, I love that for once. Somebody actually took the time with a small race in an MMO and properly modeled the gear to fit them as opposed to just squishing it down. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So how, how do MMOs follow it? So, so if you look at the gear, especially we were talking about earlier, um, all of the, ra- the um, dungeon gear and u- racial unique gear, it's, you- it's not like they just, just made like remaps of it. All of them are proportioned entirely differently to fit and mold to each of the races in entirely different ways. Right, except it's not the, the same models with different skins. Yeah, ex- except so for maybe the Sovari models. and the human. I, I think there's a little bit too much um, equivalence between the two. Really? No, I feel like there's a bunch of stuff sticking out and stuff like that that's different. Oh, I just say, yeah, slightly different places. But either way, like, but the Asura, every piece of armor have different heads. totally fits the Asura. Like, like the the... I, I, I just yeah, the, the amount of effort they put into Guild Wars Two is is, is 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 continues to amaze me in many ways. Um, and yeah, all the ar- all the endgame armor looks badass on a human or char, but looks fucking adorable on this. <laughs> like so, some of the, like the biggest like the the Centurion's home and stuff that you see in like m- many of the stuff just look amazing. But um, so the, the, what I was getting around to was for me at least like. In Endgame, I can, I can I can see myself loving human for their personal story and, and wanting to have like a character based in Divinity's Reach because that is a beautiful city. But, but like, when I you're can horny, see myself... you play Asura, don't you? So. <laughs> well, I, I can see myself. I like, was gonna say the humans were the prettiest. Six months Maybe after the release, norms. six months after the release, I I can see myself really enjoying the fact that I'll be continued to be entertained by the animations of the Asura just in terms of day to day play. Like a human, a human moves like quote a quote unquote human. entertained. What what is that called? <laughs> But like I will, I think I will never get over the carry they're, animation they're and the back. Absolutely adorable. The um the the dodging animations, please. Sir. I'll, I think I'll never get over them because I haven't. It's been what like a week so far. I've been watching pretty much PvP videos for this entire week doing theory crafting. But every time there's a zero on screen, I just yeah, I just I love it. I, I don't think I'll ever get over it. Darren, what are your I, thoughts here? Are but just just on a random on a random question, uh, kind of related. Go ahead. Are you by chance a brony? No, I'm not. The hell? Oh. Don't bring hey, that five, up five, in here. That's five, disgusting. Five. There, there I, could be I'm some overlap saying, there. There could definitely be some overlap there, but I'm not. I'm just me. saying, like, I would not be surprised. <laughs> I think it's, I think you it's, just it's, hate it's, anything it's less, adorable. You have no soul, Austin. Awesome. I, I think it's less <laughs> like, like brony kind of thing as it is, like, being comfortable with liking an adorable race. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm totally cool with that because they look fucking awesome. And, and more than anything, like, yeah, they're adorable and, and their animations are adorable, but... More, more so beyond the adorableness of the animations is just how well done they are. Yep, I don't think I can like they are some of the best animations. Yeah, they are just just from a, a technical standpoint, those are the best animations in the game. Period. Yeah, in the game. Yep, totally. In Guild Wars Two, and, and if I'm going to be yeah, and if I'm going to be looking at this character as my main character for the entirety, or or I imagine most of the entirety, unless I switch mains of my time in Guild Wars Two, animations are a big deal. 
Yeah, I, that's, that's slash kind of like wave. what I said. I like, slash wave I, all day on my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> just never, never slash cry. Never. I slash cannot cry. wait till the slash dance is put in. I cannot wait till slash dance is put in. Yeah, I'm. I've been waiting for that. Like, <laughs> I want to see my characters fucking dance. I'm assuming like, they're waiting. Why for do you think I got this game, Marina? That I paid twenty <laughs> extra dollars so I can get my goddamn dance animation. So that's this era as as like. Well, the character models and so on and so forth. But how do you, how do everyone feel about the uh, about Rada Sum? I think Noob has the <sighs> perhaps most telling story in this one. Noob, it's like a fucking. I bet the suicide rates in that place is super high, <laughs> but they're not actual suicides; they're just accidents. It's like there's like slanted platforms that I thought you were supposed to be able to walk on, but really you literally slide off them, and then I fall into my death multiple times in Rada <laughs> And oh, the man. part where it's like your adorable little guy just plummets to its death. <laughs> that's the part. It's, it's I don't know about hard. you, but it's like an one endless death, abyss. You don't make another mistake. Oh yeah, that, um, <laughs> that's what I would. That's what normal people would do. But I'm not a normal person. I don't fall in those conventions. Anyways, it's like you, your tiny little being, falling into this endless abyss, and your heart cries is what it does. And, and Looks like yeah. Team Asura is blasting off again! <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Rawson, how do you, you... You say that you, you like um, the Asura area and Rada Sum. How, how do you feel about Rada Sum and the Asura area, Rawson? I, I liked it. Uh, I thought it was a lot better laid out than the Silvari area for comparison. I still think Divinity's Reach is far and away the, the winner. best city. Yeah, Absolutely. The winner. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, that's why humanity is the greatest. This, I think, Ross, I think, I think this might plus, be the first time we've actually agreed on something. Humanity and Norn are the prettiest. Norn, are I, I Norn maybe not so much. Yeah. I'm just, if we're saying prettiest, well, so look, I would look, say probably motherfuckers, human. I just got a fantasy for, like, a, a nine-foot-tall lady, all right? <laughs> crushing, crushing you. Just crushing you. That's not very... Yeah, I've heard a crush you between yes. guys. All right. Don't, don't judge me on this. Turkey, what are, you, what are your opinions? I, I know you don't like the Asura too much as a race. I, I, I don't really want to go into it because you're wrong. Um, so what, Lies, what do you feel about? I am right. <laughs> <laughs> you're a so what do you feel about you um, also Rada hate Sum? children? Did you Rada get a Sum chance is to absolutely I do hate children. awesome? I'd say it's High five. on par with Divinity's Reach. I wouldn't go that far, but I, I kind of agree. No, it's it is cool really well done. It's great because um, a lot of people don't realize that, yeah, so Radosum on the map looks like a giant cube, and that's because there's a floating cube above Radosum, and if you haven't seen it, just go there and look up. It's, 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 it's really spectacular. Um, go there right Radisum now. When is actually a... Right um, go there right now. The underground aren't city. up right now, but do it anyway. <laughs> so Radosum's an underground city, so when you get there, it's actually a bunch of ladders that keep going down and down and down, and what that does is essentially... Um, you have different layers for different purposes, and you have obviously a um, waypoint in each of those layers. So I find that Rasum is perhaps one of the best laid out in terms of getting things done. In that, if you go to one waypoint, you're right next to the guild registrar. If you get another, you're right next to the merchants. And and just, but if you to get from one to the other without waypointing, you can just like jump off the ledge at the right spot, noob. Um, jump off a level Fuck and you. land. Hey, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and land you in the right space down. to just talk to the next like, it's really quick to get around it's in, like in I didn't Rasum. think like this clearly it wasn't like a dangerously steep slope it was like a slightly curved slope and I'm like oh, I'll just walk here and then I fall off <laughs> and then I go to the other I one keep I'm like, maybe that was just me glitching and then I fell <laughs> off again Yeah. and then I stopped playing Asura <laughs> uh, but even beyond that like it's My just it was an incredibly I, I like the how do you guys feel about the art design like um, Noob oh, how do you feel about wonderful. the art design of it yeah. is absolutely wonderful. The Asura zone, um, well, especially the buildings. The zone, like it's jungle. I, I preferred the Silvari like jungle better because it was a lot more colorful. Um, right. But the building and architecture is very unique. I don't think many games have something like that. It, it does. It is akin to like Mayan Aztec architecture with like a very different spin on it. And I thought that was great. So it's it's an interesting point though because both and I, I can confirm this now. Um, well, according to the wiki. Uh, both the Asura zones and the Silvari zones do fall under inverted commas the Tarnished Coast, but also I believe a bunch of times they actually are still named the Mugupa jungle. Um, but even though the same jungle, they look entirely different oh, yeah. in my opinion. Definitely. So it, it's the same for in the original Guild Wars, where the Asura zones were different, look completely different from the Mugupa jungles. 
So how did how did you feel? What were your impressions of that, Noob? Um, so the difference I found between the uh, what do you call them, Silvari jungles and the Asur jungles is the Asur jungles seem similar from the Asur jungles in Guild Wars One that it was a jungle. It was like, it's kind of like I don't know. It's something I think it's more like a forest than a jungle. Um, yeah, it's well, it's a jungle forest kind of thing. Like it's a very dense. Well, I wouldn't say dense, but it's it's, it's sparse in some areas and dense in others. It, it wasn't very than... like abnormal jungle, other than like the buildings. I didn't yeah, I think so abnormal. But um, the Silvari area was like magnificent in the way that it's very colorful. It was deep green and then really dark, but like uh, vibrant colors that would show up and right. like huge plants and everything. And I thought that was like a wonderfully nice looking setting, and I thought. I would like to hang out over there. <laughs> Rosen, what, what are your feelings on the differences there? Between the Asura and the... the actual, um, yeah, the jungle kind of layout of, of both. Uh, there's definitely some differences, uh, but it's mostly primarily just the, the whole architecture thing. It seemed like uh, the Silvari area kind of struck me as more rainforesty. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Whereas, whereas, the, uh, whereas the Asura area felt a bit more, more like a, closer to a temperate forest. Right, yeah, and, and and how I phrased that was it's a forest versus a jungle. Like one feels like a jungle, the other one feels yeah. like a forest. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and it's, Durin, any thoughts on this? Uh, did you, did you feel that um, they were distinct, or did you feel like you were just kind of in the same area with some small differences, Durin? They both had lots of trees. <laughs> well, no, no, hang on now. Now the Silvari area also had some other interesting stuff. Okay, sorry, it had, it had big flowers effects. too. No, but it also had things like. Like uh, instead of a staircase, it's it's a it's a bunch of mushrooms. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Cool. yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I, I guess you know, really, the they did some really interesting things with the zones. But um, I think it was Zimmy Ramen uh, last week or week before uh, had said like, and I kind of agree. Like, it's just I'm I'm kind of done. You're with over jungles, forest yeah. zones in in games. So like, it, it like, the zones were okay. They were decent. They they served their purpose, and they did some <laughs> some kind of cool things in there with them. Um, but like as much as I love the Asura, and I will probably make all my characters Asura, more, or, or at least the majority, um, I'm not sure how many of them I will actually level through the Asura zone. I may take them over Dude, the Noran zone instead. Really? I'm, I'm kind of uh, partial towards leveling Asura in a Noran zone because just the size differential is absolutely oh. awesome. <laughs> it's so cool. Everything's so really massive, massive really and you're so jungle. tiny. Games totally don't have enough jungle. Yeah, so, uh, I kind of, I don't know. They, they need more sewers too. No, like, Rosen and like... Durin are the ones who play more in the way of MMOs. Oh, yeah. So okay. them it's saying that, um, yeah. yeah, so them saying that there's a, a, a huge jungle thing in MMOs at the moment. Maybe that's actually, yeah. I, I, I don't every, every, every MMO there's has a, a jungle. There's a huge jungle? Every, every, every MMO, MMO has a jungle and, and, and every MMO has a desert. Right. No, no, no. I, 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 how about the, oh, well, I guess. It's well, all the difference is Guild Wars is artistically beautiful. And yeah. Your <laughs> terrible MMO and, is not. And, and no, like honestly, noob, like you, you kind of have a point there somewhere deep inside that um, remark. <laughs> Insult. <laughs> yeah, uh, in, in that, like the art style of Guild Wars Two definitely makes being in a yeah. jungle setting more tolerable, just because it. Yeah. It, even though it is basically kind of generic jungle, um, it still beautiful. looks pretty. Because of, I, I, of I, 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 I didn't find it generic also, at all, but yeah, just I, th- there's the fact that there's no, there's no. At least in the Silvari era, there was no uh, uh, architecture really in terms of like there weren't there wasn't there wasn't any sort of like cut stone or, yeah. or a whole lot of like you know even slabs of wood to build a structure. Yeah. A structure was a hollowed out weird flower looking thing. <laughs> yeah, there was no tool. Like, there was a tree like was tool stairs. made. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, did you feel that gave it like a, a visually unique style, like Russell at all? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. I mean, like I said, it was it, it felt like a big giant overgrowth. Like like they awesome. crafted things out of organic material. So yeah, I just like, I, 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 the, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'd personally say that because I, I want to move on in terms of topics, but um, I personally say that technically technically woods and organic material, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't see the grove. I didn't see the area uh, of the Silvari area. I forgot what it was called um, directly outside the, the grove, but I saw the northern section of it. And I, I, so I did get to see some of the jungle there. And in my opinion, um, as a person who hasn't, isn't over jungles, I actually like the jungle aesthetic. Um, there is a significant difference between the two, in my opinion. And you don't really feel like you're doing the same thing again, if you do both the Asura and Silvari areas. So, 
Well, but you take that for its worth. Like that, everyone here, if he seems to have a slightly different opinion on the matter, which is good. Um, did anyone else? My next topic is: uh, Did anyone else uh, fight the race, the area bosses for either of those sections? I, I fought both. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, Rosen. Wait, area bosses, what? as in like the oh area the zone bosses, boss. In... the zone boss. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the zone boss was. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll lay it out. But Rosen, did you did you fight either of the zone bosses? No, I didn't manage to get any of the cool. zone bosses. And, and Turkey? I only fought the Silvari boss. That was We're talking about the big worm thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but I did not um, fight the. Oh, I fought the big Sur- worm. Yeah, I fought the big worm. Yeah, Is that the so boss you're talking about, okay. Exactly. Um, I find it cool because like the part of the the selling point of Guild Wars 2 is that it's always fun like you're always doing something um, you're, do, you're doing the same thing throughout the game in that you're always doing fun things throughout the game instead of rushing to end game or waiting till end game before you, you're fighting huge bosses or um, really difficult uh, situations in standard PvE areas um, so how did well Noob did, you fought the, the worm thing in inverted commas in the um, Silvari area how did you feel the execute how do you feel the boss fight was did you think it was interesting <sighs> It wasn't particularly. I would say it was distinct from many other boss fights, but that didn't say that doesn't mean it wasn't fun because all right. of the boss fights are extremely fun. Um, yeah, it didn't have like a distinct feel to it though. Like I wouldn't say, oh yeah, it's definitely a Silvari boss or something like that. <laughs> uh, Tarkin, what are, you, what are your thoughts on it? Mm, it's a boss. I just killed it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was like that was kind of my my takeaway from the Silvari one. Um, so what it is is uh, kind of tune out if you if you don't want spoilers. But you kind of walk up. There's an event in the area. There's like these kind of big guardian things you have to fight. Um, once you take, I think they're like corrupt corruption, like avatars of corruption, some shit like that. Um, you take them down, and then this, they, this giant worm comes up, which also spawns more of those avatars of corruption or whatever they are. And you, so you're kind of essentially fighting a boss with many like sub bosses around. It, it was it wasn't particularly interesting how, how they've um, started approaching bosses now, and I don't believe they did this in the original, or like they, it was less obvious before. Was that when you're targeting a boss or an air like a, a really big one, so a zone boss or something like that? Um, there's now a new form of ridicule on it. Uh, before I believe you were just kind of targeting it, or the reticule was kind of closer to their body, so it wasn't very obvious, or just on, like it was a part, it was just sitting on a part of the body. But now, now what happens is when you target one of these area bosses, it actually brings up a, a large targeting reticule on your screen. And not not that it was particularly invasive, but what it helped was if you if you're a person like me who uses who turned auto targeting off and all that stuff, um, and you click on enemies to be able to uh, target them. Uh, targeting the uh, the zone boss is much easier now because you kind of just have to mouse over anywhere on the giant X or um, crosshair, which is a part of like floating in your screen in the direction of the boss to be able to select them as a target, which, which is kind of cool. Obviously, um, more coordinated teams will be able to use target calling and target selection to do the same thing, but it, I thought it was a cool, interesting effect. But I actually, I, I fully have to agree. The, the Silvari one wasn't particularly interesting. It was a enemy with high HP, low... I didn't feel like they got the melee balance right. I think it's still aimed way towards melee. Um, like, like if 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 Tarkin, what did you play in that? Were you a guardian or were you a warrior? I was you were playing warrior, right? my warrior. Yes. Yeah. But I did not dare go up close <laughs> because if you go up close, even with the zoomed out camera angle, you still can't see that it's going to rip you to bits. Yeah, exactly. Like that's, that's a good point because when you when you come up against these area bosses, the camera zooms out a little bit, which gives you a cool like perspective on the battle. But at the same way, like, these bosses are huge. Like in some cases, it does it still doesn't do quite a good job in bringing you the scope of the boss, or even like things like as you correctly point out, the animations or animation timing of the boss aren't particularly obvious because you can only see a part of the boss. Like it's something as simple as that. You can only see the base of its big worm body so like how do i know when it's winding up for an attack if that's all the way happening all the way up there and i'm all the way down here um so that's an issue and and it's gonna be interesting to see how or even if they can address it at least between now and release because there's only there's less than a month to go now for the pre the early the head start guys um but that's the savari one um i want to round out with the asura one i I think the only one here who experienced it i believe does anyone else uh, fight the fire elemental no, right. yeah. Was so that the, the like zone boss, the yeah. one in that in that building thing? I yeah. attempted it. <laughs> I didn't realize that was the zone boss, but we, we gave it a go. 
<laughs> how did you go? Uh, what, what, tell me what relate to me your experience because I think that entire kind of area was really interesting, in, especially in comparison to the Silvario one. What, what you, how did you run me through that encounter or how it started? Well, we basically kind of stumbled across that area while we were exploring, and had I I had no idea that was actually what led to the zone boss. We just kind of far to, far away through there, and and it's in a building basically where like um, shit's going haywire, and like enemies from like all over the world are like being randomly teleported in and out of this place. So you'll Which be walking cool. in here, and this is an Asura <laughs> area, so this is in the jungle, and yeah. you'll you'll find a fucking polar bear. <laughs> And had to have really to fight cool. the polar bear. Yeah, it was really really cool. Uh, there was there was oh, actually it's all a reference to loss. There was a there was a jumping puzzle in there that we attempted to do. Um, oh god! But had Are you enemies me? along yeah, the way. Right. Yeah, oh, uh, had god. had enemies along the way, and we finally gave up on because we just kept losing too many <laughs> people on the way up. Um, but yeah, we finally made it over to the the fire elemental, and and kind of similar <laughs> to what Harkian said about the worm. Like I was playing a melee character at the time. I was playing my uh, oh yeah warrior. What was I playing? I don't my remember, thief. But... My thief. Yeah. Um, and I had no ranged options, so I was just running up on them. And you couldn't really see anything, and then suddenly you would just die instantly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was pretty so, much my experience about four times before I finally went to bed. And then you just gave up. Yeah. 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 I think we, when, when we did it that time, we gave up. So these area bosses are pretty big, and I don't believe they have too much in the way of health regeneration. So like, frequently you'd stumble upon it, especially with this fire elemental, and it would be on half health, even a third health. Um, and it would just be like that for hours and end. Because, okay, so to run it through, yeah, dude's right. It's just like this giant kind of ziggurat looking thing. And you walk in and it's like just it's going crazy. The magic's going crazy. There's like um, elementals and like alligators looking things and like just crazy enemies you have to fight. You turn right and then there's this like hallway and a small bridge and like a big room at the end of the bridge. Um, the reason I say that is... At the start of the like the, the fire metal you can see from like the other side of the ziggurat like you, you can see it all the way in this this, this, this this menacing yellow orange glow of death so you, you walk up and there's this bridge that leads to the fire metal and then the uh, and what it does is it generates um el- like the, the what it looks like the equivalent of the elementalist like um flame elemental it's like this um flying looking gogor looking thing um which is like does fire spells and shit and a lot of damage. So we're we're standing at one end of this bridge and there's a bridge and there's a fire elemental at the end of it, and uh, in a, in the middle of the room and he's just fucking surrounded by like twenty to thirty of these like flying fire elementalist things, and we just got fucking dominate no matter no matter what because I, I came back with this um with Murderbo one of the other members of our guild and we tried like. So when we we, we 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 took it down. I'll, I'll tell you to the end the, the end of the story first. We did eventually take it down, but when we first got there, um, and I think we were like one of the one of maybe only two or three groups of people who took that thing down during the entire Beetle Weekend event, at least in the first day. Um, so we got there, and it was on half health already. So clearly some group had tried and failed, but it wasn't regenerating health. We couldn't tell if it was regenerating health. So we were like, hey, it's on half health. This is probably the most likely we ever will be to take this down in this beta. So we did multiple things. So you run towards it and it lays down all these like pockets of flyer on the ground and they explode doing like hundreds of damage and I only have hundreds of health. So I instantly die. Like, it was one of those cases where you'd instantly die in so many different wondrous, glorious ways and your body would just be flung around the place. And so it's so crazy. It's disgusting was, it was, a, it was awesome as a person who loves hard games and just like really impossible situations. It was so cool how difficult this thing was. It is so going to get toned down. It's going to get nerfed so hard because that was important like no one like barely anyone took it down so we walked in and failed a bunch of times either against it because it has this like um wave of flame that instantly kills you i think it does like 1000 damage or something so maybe a warrior could deal with it but as an elementalist i just went gone um so we got to the point where the only way we could take it down was to run as quickly as possible into the room and then strafe as hard and as fast as you can, just using your auto attack with any ranged weapons you can fucking pick off off of the ground to hit it. And just like continue to strafe, continue to run, continue to, to do, get your strafing patterns down, get like the, like just try to avoid the circles, the red circles on the floor it generates. Um, those flame things just stop everything you're doing and dodge out of the way. Um, keep your heels active, keep, keep on your healing, attune to water to keep yourself removing conditions. You just have to be on point all the time 
to even do a little bit of damage and you'd still die. It wasn't a case where you, if you did that, you'd live. You still die. You were inevitably going to die. It would catch up with you. It would kill you. The elementalist, elementalist it generates would kill you. But we had a ball of a time. It took us like, what, like 13 reses to take it down each. And it was like five of us trying to do it. But when we got those like dodging patterns down, it was marvelous. We eventually got it. It was the most awesome thing I did that beat, beat weekend. Like me and Murderbro taking that thing down was fantastic. It was kind of like, it was somewhat like a raid in that it, there was a lot of patterns to it. There was a, that, that kind of stuff to it. At least what my understanding is of a raid. But at the same time, it's it's more based on, like you can party wipe and it's not a problem. It's still PvE. It's still Guild Wars 2. So it's still based around fun. Like it, if you don't want to do it, just you just walk away. It only gave, I think it was like 500 XP, which is like half a level at that point. Of XP and maybe like three green drops, which is the highest level of drop, and maybe like two blue drops, which is the, the medium level of drop. So it wasn't like that you needed to do it. It wasn't like required for um, your advancement or to to be loot ready for the next era or anything like that. But it was just like it was awesome. It was it was like a, a definite achievement to take that thing down, and it felt badass. And I'm kind of sad to to know in my heart. I know for certain that it's going to be nerfed because it kind of has to be because we were like one of the only people to take down. Um, Duran, as a, as a person who raids, what, how do you feel about Do you think it was too hard? Yes. <laughs> uh, especially, especially for a melee person. Um, you, right. I mean, granted I was, I was, I was a little under leveled, so that definitely uh, didn't help matters, but I couldn't imagine somebody who was of the level of, you know, the, the boss to last more than maybe one hit if they were lucky. Yeah, it was it was like literally fifteen seconds. Like you know those timers they had in like uh, in games, which was like DayZ, which is how what's the average time of being alive? It was like less than a minute. It, it was yeah. definitely less than a minute for us. Um, yeah, so it, it was it absolutely like they need to do something to they need, need to do something to turn it down. But I think one of the biggest problems is because it is so large and because it has kind of a a fiery swirl around the boss itself on the yeah. floor. It makes it very hard to see any kind of the the. Um, the hitbox, the, the red, well, in the red circles when they when they show up to let you know, oh, you yeah. get the fuck out of the way. Yeah, yeah, and as a melee, that he wouldn't cast it with you at the center; he'd cast it with you at the like the inner edge of it, so you couldn't necessarily even dodge out of the way of it. Like you, one dodge roll wouldn't take you out of the red circle before it detonates yeah. on you. So it, it was, yeah, that like that, let it not be mistaken. We were all playing range to take that thing down. Like none of <laughs> us could take it down with a melee weapon like, at all. So. There is definitely some really fucked up balancing going on there, but yeah, I, I'd agree. Like, for me, that was fun. But noob, like, did what I described sound even remotely fun to you? Um, I like difficult games as well, but um, what I'm scared of is it being kind of not very fun when <laughs> there's not a lot of people around. To oh help yeah, you fight a boss. Well, we yeah. were only five dudes. Of, like, we were only five dudes. Like, they're, yeah. they're running around alone, and there's just no one to do these exceptionally hard boss fights with you yeah like a month after release or yeah. just like stuff, stuff like that like this I is the first area of the game like multiple months after right and, and, and again we, we did take it down with five people with 14 or whatever it was like reses um so obviously if you did 28 reses and it was on full health you take it down but a lot of people wouldn't find that fun and i definitely think i like i like it the way it is because i'm fucking crazy but i they're definitely gonna turn it down but it's, it's just seeing the difference between the two because i felt that the sura zone boss was significantly better executed than the Silvari one for example um and i found this this was the case with many of the inverted commas zone bosses or whatever you want to call them for across the races like there's definitely hit and miss elements of in both in terms of balance for melee versus ranged and in terms of interestingness for the boss um what do you what do you guys think like, Rosen, have you had too much experience with these these like area bosses or not, not really. I haven't had a whole lot of experience with uh, world bosses. Not unless it's something involving like an event chain. Oh, there's definitely ones like that. Like this definitely passes those ones as well. Like, have you uh, fought any event chain bosses as well? Um, yeah, I have. Like one that immediately comes to mind is in the beginning area against uh, in the beginning area for the char. Uh, you eventually run into this big scary shaman. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't really have much of an issue with him personally. Oh, dude, they nerfed again, him so I'm hard. Awesome. They nerfed him so hard. Now he's just like a. Oh, they did. Yeah, now he's just way easier to take down. So. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, here I thought I was great. <laughs> no, no, that, that was this week. Did you do it this weekend or the time before that? No, it was it was last last beta week. Oh, then then he was still hard. Then yeah, beta weekend too. Oh, he was still, then he I was am still great. Yeah. All right, High five. good. I, <laughs> I still feel I still feel like I'm worth something. Yay. 
But do you also feel like there's um there's a bit of hit and miss there in terms of the bosses? Not really. I mean, I like a challenge. I like going head on into one. So for me, having a having a a boss that's actually fucking difficult is kind of interesting and i i like that <laughs> but i like having i agree i like having a boss where well, compared to other mmos for me it's for me bosses in other mmos are more about following a script it's like you sure. know okay a boss is going to do this at this moment and he's going to do this at this moment and just do your best dps rotation and do not get hit by him which means don't stand in the fire and I like some. I, I I like variety, and I like it doing something different. Right. And so, do you feel like they've executed that in this? I I, I do I, personally. Yeah. I, I think they I think they certainly have done it a lot better than any other MMO before this. Yeah. Which thank fucking god. <laughs> I'm, I'm so goddamn sick and tired of World of Warcraft bosses. <laughs> it's it's an interesting note because. Um, for example, like me versus that flame elementalist, when we got our dodging routines down in terms of like just getting personal rhythms and patterns down, it was never a case of like, oh, that, that circle will be there. Or, um, like if, if, if the element, the elementalist bunch in certain ways, or you can draw them off in certain ways, it was never like, it was, it was pretty much entirely random or it felt random the entire time. Like it was a case of, it was a moment to moment thing, not something that we could rehearse and get better at. And I think that's a significant advantage that's a good thing it should be moment to moment it should be seat of your pants boastable badass action fun um it shouldn't be a script as wilson accurately described but at the same time having to die over and over again in order to f- fight a boss that's never a good thing in my opinion Even though i enjoyed it um that the demon souls in me came out of it but uh, it's, it's yeah it's, it's never it's never it's never good. Dur- Durin, what, what are your opinion? Do, do you think res, like res killing a boss is is even remotely fun or something they should uh, look at? I I think it can be fun um, as long as it's not overdone. Like if, if it's balanced in a way where like resing is a possibility to get the boss killed. It's not like when people die, you're like, well, I guess, you know, everybody die now so that we can run back and try this again. Like <laughs> right, that's, yeah. that's something that I'm glad to see, you know, not in a game, not in an MMO anymore. I did enough of that with other MMOs. Um, <laughs> but if, if like the strategy is to just fucking wear them down by dying over and over and over and over and over again, like, no, that's not fun. Yeah. Cause this, this was kind of that. Like it ended up, even though when you lived for a minute 30 versus living for a minute, it was the most spectacular that like, you just felt so badass. but you eventually died. Like it was, we definitely yeah. wore that thing down. Um, what, what do you guys feel of area bosses having those kind of like really almost stationary or very slow regen rates on their health bars so multiple teams could perhaps give it a shot over the, the period of the day? I think that's good, precisely <laughs> because of what you just said. Awesome. It gives multiple teams the shot at it throughout the day. That's, yeah, and, and we do, the odd thing is we don't know the restart timer on it. Um, we don't know like when the team, but when we killed it, it wasn't around. Like we didn't check back in too often, but it didn't seem to be around for quite a while afterwards. Um, Dur- Durin, what what are your th- thoughts on that? Uh, it's, uh, I mean, I I don't see a problem with that really. I mean, right. if if it, somebody it's, it's, it has negatives as well, because if every if if it's a case where it never really wear like it is essentially multiple teams trying to wear it down. I, mm-hmm. I feel like there would never be a case of everyone banding together to have to take it down. You know. Um, that's, that's, that's some that's something I, I'm coming as a feeling that to, they disagree. Well, to, to some extent, but I, I I would say that if they felt like they needed a fix for that, uh, what they could maybe implement is something along the lines of, um, the more people that are fighting it when it goes down, the better the rewards. Oh, that could be cool. That way, it I encourages. Done, I think they've done that in this game, but it could be yeah, an that, interesting that, system. Yeah, that way it encourages more people to to show up and and try and take it down so they can get you know, better or maybe a better chance at rewards that they're wanting. Um, but it's still possible for a small group to show up and be like, Hey, they're at 10%. I think we can do it and take them down. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is, that is really, like for us. It's, it's at half. Let's just try it. Let's just, let's just do this guys. Um, and it was fun. Uh, yeah, for us so it was that, a full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was there. That was, that was fucking impossible. Um, so that, that was my favorite moment of this beta, taking down that fire elemental. Um, so I want to go around and do favorite moments for everyone. Um, does anyone have one so I don't put anyone on the spot? Or shall I, shall um, I put someone on the spot? Um, I, hey, I have one. 
Cool. Thief. Thief. I discovered my second favorite class. Really? And so, yeah, that's I pretty cool. I absolutely love Thief. And awesome. Yeah. And so it, what, it's a really big difference between a thief and a guardian. Like, what what, what do you what what drew you to the thief the, versus the guardian? The short bow is the fucking greatest thing ever invented in a video game. I Do that teleport skill. Bow. That teleport skill oh, is nuts. It's so good. <laughs> For people don't know like this, the thief is based off a um like a regen. It's like adrenaline. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yes. Well, it's not like adrenaline. It's more like mana from the first school. It's like yeah. a regenerating resource. Um. That all your or most of your skills you use, and one of the short bow skills is literally just I think it was like use half of it or so, and you teleport to where you can sh- whatever you can shoot the short the short bow, and you can use that to just get, because there's no recharges or any of it, um because it just works off that that resource, so you can just fucking go. You can just when you, when you want to go somewhere, you just go. It's like um, it's very equivalent to how I felt the uh, wormhole ability with teleport is um in Diablo three with the wizard. It felt it felt as good as that, like just getting that bam 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 kind of feel, um, and moving that fast so quickly it was awesome. Um, any, anything else that really drew you to the thief noob, or was it mainly the short um, I, I love double daggers as well. High double five. daggers is so good. Yeah, just the, the the great mix of melee and range. The well, and cool and, have that and, and the and the, 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 an, the animations the animations they gave the double dagger attacks are so good. Yeah. Like you just Dude. feel like such a badass. It looks even more badass when it's in the sewer doing it. I love it. <laughs> um, Rawson, what was your favorite moment from the beaters? Oh, for mostly, I, I for me mostly, it was showing it off to friends, oh, cool. getting them to play it with me, and having one friend be fucking flabbergasted when I put forth the idea of me being able to easily join him when I was like level ten or eleven, and he was level three. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's cool. Like, yeah, hey, dude, I can totally join you. It's like, no, it's gonna make it easy. No, it's not gonna make it <laughs> like, easy. Not only is it not I gonna make it down. easy, but I can get gear from this. Yeah, yeah. Not only that, but guess what? I'm getting level ten and eleven drops. Oh hell yeah! And then, um, I think another, another interesting point with this is they've improved the joining system. Um, so if, what they had a, a problem with before was that if you had a team, so a party together, um. And you're across different servers. So, for example, two of you are on Overflow, which happened a lot in the Assyria area this time. And I'm happy to, to say that the Overflow system worked really well. Um, two of you are on, on Overflow and one of them is on the actual server. He can join you guys in the Overflow quite easily just by right-clicking your name and hitting Join In. And that would work across moving through Overflow servers. It's just a really great system to get your party together. Of course, you can't... I, do that from across the world like if you're in um divinity's reach and he's in lion's arch that that's not that's not what this is intended for this is for moving between servers but also cool is um if you open the map and you shift click on a waypoint it puts that in your chat window so if you if you shift click in waypoint and you put it into guild and you hit enter that posts that waypoint into your guild chat if anyone clicks that it opens up their map and takes them to that waypoint that's cool I, I didn't know. Other, I'm not sure if other games that, do that. I, I didn't but know it's that either. Awesome. It is I, that's awesome. really cool. Yeah. So like straight up, you can go. Oh, just meet me here. Post it in guild chat, and then everyone can just freaking bamp in right there. Really easy. Really like just like very low effort and great ways to get together as a team. So th- th- that was your main thing, Rawson. Did you did you win anyone over, Rawson? Did anyone say they're buying the game? I, I think they both were already, but it's just more along the lines of going like, holy shit, <laughs> this is actually doing something good for one. <laughs> awesome. That's that's great to hear. Like, why did no one think about doing this in like 10 years? <laughs> and that's pretty much what like a lot of this experience of this game has been, is like playing it and having these kind of uh, features that are in this game, these like that you, you feel like should have always been here and you, you get this feeling of like, why hasn't anyone else done this? Yeah, there's just in so many ways, like especially the level scaling, especially level scaling, um, which is my number one. Like when I, I've said in multiple cases, this is my favorite thing about Guild Wars 2, but I will always return and say, if I was actually asked what was my single favorite thing about Guild Wars 2, it's the level scaling, being able to play with friends whenever, wherever, as whatever level you are, whatever level they are, as long as they're not over your level. But yeah, it's amazing. Um, Turkey, what was your favorite thing about Guild Wars 2 from this beta? Um, oh, there's just too many good things, but <laughs> name a couple. One thing that really stood out <laughs> was the Whisperer rifle skit. Oh, that was yeah, that was pretty cool. And I, and you're another one I converted to warrior rifle, right? You like the rifle as well? Yes, I do. 
Rifles are <laughs> awesome. But the skin that I found, yeah, it, was it looks so awesome. It is that was the, the one with the multiple sniper um, rifle. That was the one. It was like a sniper rifle, but it had like multiple scopes on it, right? Was that the one? No, no. It had a single really long scope. Oh yeah, it had a suppressor a barrel, on yeah. the barrel. Yeah, it had a suppressor on the barrel. That was really cool. <laughs> Good skins, man. Good skins. Um, any any other big moments for you, Tarkin? None that really stood out. All right. Um, it was just all the ones that really awesome. stand out to me were from the other beta weekend. So, oh yeah, that's that's true. That is, yeah, it's it's kind of crazy that I'm still finding things in this beta that is that is surprising and awesome to me. But yeah, you're definitely right. We've done so much already. I'm kind of worried about it when it comes to release. Like, Durin, do you have something to say there? We've we've done so little though. I mean, really, when it comes to like seeing the game world and everything, we've seen the starter zones. That's it. Yeah, just like That's straight all up, we've seen in this entire game. Like, I was looking at the map this this last beta weekend. And I, I was I was actually showing my wife like the size of the world, and like I was looking at it and realizing like okay this is the, I, I I know I played this area I played that area I played that area, and like I was you know looking at it and there's just like we've only seen maybe ten percent of the world fifteen percent yeah and there's so much more of that of that world map that we haven't even touched oh hell yeah and and I think I was the, also the only one here who got to um, Brisbane Wildlands was that the only one here got there no I also got there mm-hmm. with you nope. Right, so you, you guys got there as well, and I, I feel like just they've consistently been able to trans. Like, not only are there, are there have you only experienced like a, a small amount of the zones, but when I go from a level fifteen to, to like ten to fifteen or zero to fifteen area to a level fifteen to twenty five, I definitely feel a difference both in the structure of the dynamic events, the and the spacing of the dynamic events, and the difficulty of the dynamic events. I feel I can actually see the progression of how this game starts awesome and even gets more awesome as the game goes on because everything like just the the complexity of the things you're doing. Like for example, in Brisbane Wildlands, there's this thing where you have to wear a disguise, like just a heart quest. You have to wear a disguise and you have to sneak into this bandit camp. And you can like poison their water and like steal their like their um what's it called their, their uh, plans and stuff and it's just like all these crazy little things. But the same map on the side, there's like this really difficult, badass like um bandit camp assault kind of thing where you had to like take them on. And there was like this this like area kind of not an area boss, but just like a straight up boss who um was in the middle and he could get aggroed in different ways and he'd spawn enemies in different ways and like it was like really difficult. And that was only like a level fifteen to twenty five area, um. And I can, I can definitely see how that would progress towards it, especially here, like what we talked about a couple of weeks ago in terms of like at the end of the game, there will be no heart quest, there'll only be dynamic events and you'll we'll start getting dynamic event webs earlier on the game to transition into that final end game. I can't wait to that stuff. But um, uh, to whoever, who have I not hit yet? Durin, what was your favorite moment in the, the speeder? I think I kind of had two. Uh, one of them was... Um kind of started off as a not good moment and that was when i realized the engineer wasn't really uh yeah. with me as much as i'd hoped yeah we'll, tell, we'll um, talk about classes next week i, I definitely yeah yeah talk about that but yeah go it, on. It, it was really cool but it just wasn't quite what i was expecting um but then from that i decided to try some other classes and realized that i fucking love elementalist and that has now become my main dude, yeah. launch dude so, yeah <laughs> Um, so there was that, and then also kind of the realization that I am am actually very interested in structured PvP, and I'm really happy about that because um, I I think that with Guild Wars two not having a true like rating in game, um, like I was already happy about that anyway, but I was also kind of worried <laughs> about what I would do at in game, and to know that there's going to be not only or but also um, structured PvP and world to world, like I know I'm going to have tons of stuff to do at, at it's going to be awesome, this. yeah, and. Like just seeing like the progression on world versus world gear and structured PvP gear, like you can make your structured PvP guy look real cool, um, with like the the rewards from that kind of stuff, and just like just seeing, and the the obviously build wars, like just theory crafting and all that stuff associated with it. I just I just I'm happy. I'm happy that I like structured PvP now, and that just makes it was to all the better for me. So with that happy ending comes the end of our podcast. Um, does it? Did anyone have anything else to say? I think we've hit the beta uh-huh. impressions pretty good. If if someone can get me a life size sewer doll, I'm willing to pay a pretty high price. <laughs> uh, go, don't get I, it. Would, it would just get ruined. He'd just rut against. Oh, it would be weird. Um, so I just want to crush its head under my thighs. Let, let's let's do oh, some plugs. God, this is disgusting. Um, Rawson, do you have any plugs this week? No, I don't have any plugs this week. Aww. Except for <laughs> I don't know, play La Mulana. Hey, that's 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 good enough, Durin. That's that's a good game. 
Uh, the same as always, my, my stream. Now that I got my power supply seems stable and I can stream without crashing my computer, um, I'm, I'm going to be picking that back up again. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, so I'll, check out I'll, Saints Row the Third. And I, 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 please finish Dead Spit. Please. Yeah, I was, was going to say, man. like, Saints Row the Third <laughs> is kind of dependent on his work schedule. So it's going to be kind of off and on on that one. Um, but I, I definitely plan on going back and finishing Dead Space because I have some other yeah. stuff that I would like to get into. So that's twitch.tv forward slash Duran, D O U R A N. It's pretty good. He, he does good work. Um, New Barama, any. Uh, uh, I'd should like I just to skip plug you? the Giant Bomb PC Gaming Hub. Hey! If you're from Giant Bomb and you like PC games, so Arma 2, Counter Strike, Battlefield 3, really any game, um, just hit us up on the. There's La Milana? Not no. No. <laughs> That's, that is a PC game. <laughs> I have player? it on PC. No. Well, I guess then it's irrelevant, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's well, awesome. So you can play with a bunch of other Giant Bomb guys. Um, we have a Mumble server and everything. I'm hoping Cynic could link to the thread. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll put that in. Oh, yeah, awesome. And uh, just feel free to hop on sometime. Yeah, so it's the Giant Bomb PC game hub. They're cool guys. Um, yeah, they're definitely cool guys. Uh, Turkey? Well, now Turkeen. that we've done all these... Um, Experience, um, experiences, and with the game on the horizon, Lincoln Force will see you in game. Oh yeah, join our guild, man! Lincoln Force, um, <laughs> and like our Facebook page. That I totally <laughs> made. Oh, stop it! Stop it! We do we have, have that. Lincoln Cast Facebook. Don't. don't forget to do it follow so, us on so Twitter. I can, I'll get you there. I'll get there. Listen. Add you at this time. <laughs> pin, pin <laughs> us on Pinterest. Um, and don't forget and to check out Razor. I don't. So I, I, would, I, would, I was also going to say go check us out on Google Plus, but <laughs> <laughs> no one uses Google. Um, so check yeah, we, our guild is uh, Lincoln Forest. You can find us on the Giant Bomb forums. So just Google for Giant Bomb Guild Wars Two. You find you don't, our forums. You don't need to send a resume or anything. Don't for, yeah, we're, we're absolutely open, especially with the new 500 person guild cap, um, which has been covered in other podcasts. So don't even touch it here, but it's amazing. Um, it's absolutely open. We work on a everyone's welcome, but only dicks will stay. I'm oh, sorry, only only non dicks <laughs> will stay. That was that came out so wrong. Well, um, dicks do end up staying. Jokes will be kicked. Where would you? Everyone's o- all open to everyone, but jokes will be kicked. I want. I want. Where, where do dicks? dicks? Where do dicks I want stay? All <laughs> the dicks. And with that, um, I'm Sigurd Self What Cynic. about all the decks? <laughs> I'm Self Cynic. This is the Lincoln Cast, episode 14. You can check out 13 on in the show notes. Um, also on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash the Lincoln Cast. Follow us at, follow us at the Lincoln Cast on Twitter, Twitter, and um, Twitter. message us or email us um, the Lincoln Cast at gmail.com. Check out our MySpace. So uh, thanks for listening and goodbye. 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 Oh, 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 oh,